Welcome everyone to V8 Online's live and exclusive coverage of the iRacing.com V8 Supercars official online series. Proudly brought to you by our good friends at V8 Supercar Fan Group, Direct Clutch Services and a very own V8's online superstore. Stephen Sandman Clark and the host chair for V8 Online's live and exclusive coverage of round three of the iRacing V8 Supercar series from Road Atlanta, broadcasting in glorious high definition. And joining me in the studio, as always, my co-driver for this evening, Leo Gray. Leo, how you going, mate? Very well, thank you, Sandman. Looking forward to another fantastic night of V8 racing. And how about yourself? Very good, mate. Enjoying some of the lovely weather that Melbourne's turned on. I don't know what it's like uh, rest around Australia, but uh, loving today. But, uh, yeah, most importantly, looking forward to tonight's race. Uh, 45 laps around Road Atlanta. Well, it's going to be a cracker. We've had a brilliant start to the season, and this race is going to throw something completely different again for us. I can't wait. Yeah, there's going to be uh, there's mixed fortunes, I guess, tonight. Some people thinking about saving fuel, but uh, other people are just going to commit to, to making pit stops. So a couple of different strategies floating around about how they're going to tackle this one. And uh, right, uh, qualifying times have been pretty close, and uh, I think we're in for a ripper. It should be, it should be a great race. Yeah, not wrong there. Whatever happens, we know it's going to be a difference compared to what we've seen the last two weeks from the, the fuel saver at Okayama that was a real nail-biter, the intense little battle at uh, Oran Park last week. But you know, Road Atlanta is another favourite with the drivers, with the fans, always puts on fantastic racing. And uh, this endurance setup is going to be really able to blow things open for us. Of course, uh, we always do a little bit of a hot lap for our V8 online broadcast. And for someone who we're just waiting to pop into the broadcast booth is Matty Hill. Uh, he's going to be doing our hot lap for, from TTL. So looking forward to seeing how the guys get the job done. There's been some pretty impressive times laden down in qualifying. And uh, just uh, just noticing that uh, Matty may have just joined me in now. Here we go. Matty, are you there, mate? Yeah, good day, Sam, man. How are you going? Good, buddy. How are you going? How are you looking forward to tonight? Uh... I actually just did, I did one of the early races before and gosh, they're a, they're a long race, these ones. I'm uh, glad to see the back of the first race and now I've got a whole nother one to go. <laughs> How's the strategy playing out, mate? There's uh, a couple of different ideas floating around the joint as far as maybe saving fuel or just biting the bullet and making a pit stop. Yeah, exactly right. Um, I think I think the best way to do it is, is maybe conserve a little bit, but um, I don't know there's a lot to be said about just going flat knackers the whole way. And the and these also need um, you know you could probably run the tank dry and put whatever you need in it, but um, you know you always run that uh, the tires tire scenario into it. You drag that as well, and that's yeah, and you know it just compounds the the complexity of what what's <laughs> what you should run. How have you found qualifying so far? I mean. Uh before we head into final qualifying, you're sitting P5, so it's not too bad for the moment, mate. A couple of tents up your sleeve to grab pole position, but um, you got anything left in final qualifying, you think? No, absolutely not. As far as I'm concerned, that was my lap of the gods. That's, um, that's about as fast as I can go. Um, <laughs> these boys are doing, you know, 20.7s and 20.6s on uh, with no draft on the back straight, and that was just absolutely out of control. I don't know how they're doing that. They're just brilliant, those guys. <laughs> and it's a, it's this track has certainly got its fair share of um, different turns, plenty of undulations, a little bit of bump here and there, and uh, like you said, nice long back straightaway for plenty of drafting opportunities. This is probably the, probably the most fun track that we've got, um, obviously apart from Bathurst um, that we run we run to. I mean, it's got so many undulations, off camber corners with all other corners with huge amounts of camber. We've got slow corners, very fast flowing ones. The track's quite bumpy in places and then smooth in others. And it's um, a very, very, very tri uh, tricky little track to drive, but very rewarding when you get it right. Yeah, it's a very different place to uh, Oran Park where we were last week, Matty. But, uh, certainly a lot more passing opportunities, it seems like there is on this track. How do you think that's going to change the racing? Well, I think people with different set up, um, race strategies, they're, they're going to obviously be the ones moving forward early on. And, uh, oh, mate, it's um, there's about four or five good overtaking places. And uh, in, the, in the last race, in the previous race, the early race this afternoon, I mean, there were people diving up in on the last corner. I mean, that's just lunacy. So there's um, plenty of spots to make a move. All right, uh, Hilly, we'll let you um, just slowly take us around. You can um, 
you'll be out on your your outlap. But um, is there any part of the racetrack that sort of you you enjoy the most or hate the most? Um, straight it is probably the most enjoyable because it gives you a break. <laughs> but um, I do enjoy coming over the top of the hill, so and uh, through the turn two complex, so. It's very important coming over this hill to keep the momentum and not to spin the tyres, otherwise you wreck them like the last race. Um, short shift to fifth, get a nice drive. Onto that main straight, a little bit of a slide. Back to fourth. Nice and easy through turn one. Pick up the accelerator nice and early, very smooth. Break early for this complex is probably the biggest piece of advice I can give for that. Nice, smooth, straight lines. Be very patient with the accelerator. Go right, left and right again, bouncing off the curbs. This is good fun. Whoa, that's that's loose. There we go. Now we're back on track. Then we've got a third gear corner followed by a second gear corner. Nice bank there, and then you've got an off camber. Very slow right hand, you've got to be very patient and Gentle with the accelerator. Top speed down the back straight, probably around 276, 277. Um, you'll notice the guys in the in the race that do the fuel saver and they'll get off nice and early here. Otherwise we'll just run them down into the braking zone. Hard on the brakes. Nice and smooth. Make it as straight as possible. Right click to third there just to keep the wheel spin out of it. Back over the hill. Back into fifth and oh, it's a very, very tricky, very, very tricky little circuit to get right, but that was a very slow lap too. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, mate. It's interesting, is it? There's a couple of blind apexes on this circuit. Oh, yeah, I know, and they um, sneak up on you as well, especially turn two. Um, on that little hot lap, I pretty much committed myself to an early turn in and nearly got myself a nice little off track, but um, Fortune was able to bring it around, but... There's uh, yeah, a couple little tricky corners. If you don't get them just right, it really puts you wide and, and really can hurt your speed. The one thing I find interesting about this racetrack, you're talking about little off tracks. It's so easy to just grab a little bit too much curb through those blind apexes and get an off track. And of course, iRacing's implemented a new rule now that if you get uh, 17 incidents in a race, it's a, it's a disqualification. So I believe that sort of played a bit of havoc through the week with a couple of people practicing races. Well, just in the last race before, I, I collected 13, so I was sweating a bit at the end of the race. Um, and there were a couple of others that actually got the DQ'd just before the um, just before the end of the race, which is obviously very disappointing. But um, but uh, it really does make you smart and your act up, that's for sure. I was going to say, your thoughts on the rule. Actually, I like it. I think it's good because it, it does tidy up some of the racing there, but um, it can be frustrating when little things like, you know, blind apexes catch you out when you're just trying to grab a little bit more curb. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, um, and there's two really, really easy spots to get an off track on this circuit. I was just telling the TTL guys before that, um, you know, you come across turn two, if you, if you turn in just a fraction too early, you get all four wheels off the track and, and earn yourself one X for your off track. And then going through that last cane, it's very, very easy just to put a wheel off on the on the grass and collect another one. So, you know, you can accumulate them very, very fast. All right, buddy. Well, we're, we're almost uh, what are we, four minutes away from final qualifying. We'll let you uncompose yourself. We appreciate you stopping by here at V8s Online, mate. All the best for tonight and uh, hopefully we're talking in victory lane. Yeah, no problem at all. Um, really enjoy doing the hot laps, guys. It's a, it's a great thing you guys do, and um, yeah, we really appreciate it. So have a good call, and and um, watch for me going backwards in the race. <laughs> Cheers, mate. All the best. See you, guys. Well, it's, it's um, certainly tightening up uh, the championship points. We're, we're going to check out those. But um, tell you what, one thing interesting is um, – Two weeks in a row, our first opening two rounds of the championship, Josh Muggleton's taken the two wins, and he's had a tremendous start to the championship, hasn't he, Leo? Yeah, it's the perfect way to begin a title defence. Can't, uh, can't do anything more than that, can you? And we'll see tonight if we can go for three in a row for the Tats.com car. But uh, something that'll be interesting is he won't have a teammate there for company tonight, I understand. 
Yeah, great news. I mean, yeah, obviously, you know, Madison would be disappointed he's missing out on some uh, some racing. But uh, as a lot of people may know, he, he claimed the Race to Reality prize and um, he'll be taking part on the final race uh, in an Aussie racing car at Homebush when the V8s hit there for the final round. So he's actually off, I believe, um, he's, it'll be tomorrow he hits the track for the first time where he gets to actually take an Aussie racing car out for the first time in anger in preparation for that uh, round. So really exciting times for Madison. Yeah, no, we'll all be very excited to follow that here at V8s Online and uh, wishing him all the best, of course. So we'll quickly just run through the top 10 of the championship. Josh Muggleton over Mad- Madison Down, John Emerson in third, Renz Brookman fourth, Var Ritchie's in fifth, Lee Day in sixth, Dean O'Brien seventh, Wayne Burke in eighth, Brad Ryan ninth, and Lee Ellis rounding out the top 10. So very early stages. Obviously, you get a couple of drop rounds. It's only, uh, well, we're coming into round three tonight, so... Um, considering some of the ups and downs that some of the guys have had, it's, it's not a bad points haul for some of these guys. Yeah, a long way to go, but uh, it's already set a bit of a tone for what's to come. Just look at how tight that fight for third is and, and not much separating the top two either. So it's going to be a fantastic battle. And uh, back at Road Atlanta, it's an awesome track to be at. Uh, we're here last time out for a bit of a shorter race. It was only... Uh, 32 laps and Madison Down came away with a win that time but uh, the thing I remember was this epic fight for second with Josh Muggleton and Richard Hampstead that was a fantastic little race we had yeah it's one place that can't be you know you can't discard this place for for great racing and of course one of the the benefits of having that long back straightaway is that the guys do have a bit of a drafting party there and that does really help with the racing and uh, it really does turn it on for great racing and and the one thing you, you do have to take into consideration was the fact that we talk about those 17 incidents and in a, in a disqualification, uh, 45 laps around here, the guys really have to be mindful of that. They will have to be careful, but as we've said before, these guys are the best, so no doubt there'll be some very intense, very close racing, but very clean racing too, of course, to, uh, to keep us all excited the whole way through. Can't be too far away from uh, final qualifying now. Guys should be preparing for that one. Qualifying through the week has seen some very tight times. Josh Muggleton currently leading uh, with a 1 minute 20.689 with uh, plenty of other guys in hot pursuit. Some very tight times at the front. And again, uh, Muggo's had a, a, um, a busy week and uh, I believe he left qualifying until till, um, uh, late this afternoon again and he's he's got some pretty... Pretty good uh, pace there at the moment, and it just makes me wonder just uh, anyone can stop him. He's had a great start to the season. You can't ask for much more. Two wins from two starts, and uh, to be currently on pole position, it's uh, it's good, but you never hold your breath until, until that final session's over because there's not much in it in the top couple of times there. Well, if he says he's not putting a lot of time into it, it's certainly working for him, so got to be happy with the results so far so don't change what you're doing muggo and uh keep at it <laughs> and i bet everyone else is telling him to do the exact opposite all right so we're just waiting for final live pitches to come through the, the uh, qualifying session of course guys have got 20 20 minutes around uh road atlanta and um It'd be interesting to see. I know we've seen in seasons gone by where a lot of people use the draft and have teammates to help each other out in qualifying. So it's not a lot that we've seen in the past couple of seasons, but I think it could uh, could be a real advantage here, and especially when you take into consideration that uh, iRacing has, has changed the, the aero kit as such uh, on the V8 model for this season. Yeah, it always is a, a bit of a factor, but uh, once again, the most important part is just going to be putting together that clean, that perfect lap, which is so hard to do in one of these beasts. And as uh, as fun a track as it is for all the drivers, it's not the easiest place in the world to get right. We saw it was a very difficult track from uh, from Matty Hill's hot lap there. So, uh, of course, first thing you've got to worry about is putting together a clean lap, then you can start thinking about drafting. So as we briefly touched on, it's Josh Muggleton currently sitting on a provisional pile for the moment over Richard Hampstead, Renz Brookman, Mitch McLeod, Matty Hill, John Emerson in sixth, Lee Ellis in seventh, uh, Sean Kelly in eighth, Far Rich is ninth, and James McKnight uh, running at your top ten. But um, yeah, things are, are likely to change, and of course there's uh, European splits that uh, we have to take in consideration too. So we'll get all those um, final times after this session's finished, and of course when we start gridding up for the uh, for the race proper. Always an exciting session, this one. 20 furious minutes of road Atlanta. Currently got to our provisional 
pole sitter Josh Muggleton on screen. Feeling a little bit strange for Josh tonight. He hasn't got his wingman with Madison down like we touched on. So those guys have been leading the one-two for the last couple of races. So it'll be interesting to see who's uh, who's going to be right behind him and giving him a bit of growth tonight. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting story to follow. But Muggleton, of course, is the form driver in the uh, in the series at the moment. Coming off uh, two straight wins and, of course, a, a championship. So I think he'll be able to handle himself. But uh, let's see if there's anyone else who can step up to the plate and take the challenge to the Tats car. It's a great little view here for the, for the helicopter. It just gives you a bit of an understanding of the, some of the lines that these guys, especially through the S's there and uh, up through this section, you can just see just how much of the, the road they use. And um, one thing they've got to be careful is coming on the front straight. It's so easy just to, to want to run wide and carry as much speed as you can. But uh, of course, like we've been touching on, you've got to worry about those off tracks now. And this is that long back straight that Matthew Hill was talking about always pick up so much speed especially with this little downhill bit and the way that it kicks to the right really makes for some exciting braking duels heading down into the uh, this tight chicane at the bottom take a lot of curb there and uh, back up over the hill for another blind crest then there's this exciting right hander to uh, to complete the lap which is so important to getting a, a clean run out of there for a for a tidy run onto the front straight actually the quarter time there so maybe you got a bit of an off track there that's uh another follow-on from what we were talking about earlier in qualifying sessions if you drop a wheel off or, or make contact with another car your lap time won't count oh big moment for emerson he's looped at the good game falcon into the fence but uh that's just what i was touching on earlier that uh, you come off that um, final turn you want to carry as much speed as you can to touch the grass and around he went and made hard contact to the inside wall so easy to do. Uh, these guys, especially uh, drivers here at the front of the field, are going to be going as hard as they can, and there's nothing left in it. So, trying to find the limit, often when you find it, it ends pretty badly. We've got some uh, a pretty big field out there at the moment. 24 cars on the track, so there's going to be a lot of traffic, which of course is going to be a lot of drafting too. But uh, wouldn't want to get balked on a hunt lap because that'll just ruin your night. You can take in consideration it's almost what? So we're doing a, a minute 20 uh, around here. So uh, you're taking your out lap and then a hot lap, and if you make that mistake, another out lap in no time, you just quickly get away from you. Saying that, we've already had five minutes gone in this session as it is. Yeah, it's over pretty quick. You've got to make sure you make the most of the time that you have available to you, otherwise you're just running around logging laps for no real benefit. But uh, dare say at this point in the week, everybody will have already logged a competitive time and this is just where you see if you can go for broke and make a final run for pole. Man on screen, coming off the uh, final turn, across the start finish line, it's Tony Aldridge. fun to watch at this track just how much curve the guys use you often hear about uh, different setups that drivers will be able to or how they can set up the car to handle the curves some like to uh, to use those to their advantage others want to have a setup that uh, that makes best for staying away from the curves but there's a lot of different ways to get around this place and that of course we like to see because it provides great racing great variety Also gives you a good indication, normally if you can see how these cars behave, especially through those tight S's at the start of the lap, does give you sort of a good understanding of whether the guys are on top of their setup or not, because uh, it's so easily to, you know, if you have too much push or she's a little bit loose, you'll find out straight away when you get up through those fast S's. Yeah, that section of track is really what will show, uh, show any flaws in a setup, so you're going to want to make sure that you're on the money for tonight, especially with 45 laps ahead, because if you've got it wrong, it's going to be... Uh, a difficult night for the drivers, but hopefully everybody is on top of it at this stage. Now that was a 21.5 for Tony Aldridge, who puts him at the top of the sheets for uh, for this session, but 
Still a lot of guys to complete a lap yet. So now coming on the final turn, Scott Uren now starts his hot lap. Of course, in the Vout Supercar Fan Group Falcon. You feel a little bit lonely? No, he's going to abort, is he? And so he might be feeling a little bit lonely. Of course, we're still missing Justin Rudyard from his uh, injuries from um, from previous seasons. So uh, no, no doubt everyone's looking forward to seeing Justin back and especially everyone at the Vout Supercar Fan Group team. Got another Viat Supercar fan group Falcon on the screen at the moment, and that's Clayton Brooks. Uh, looking like he's uh, trying to set up one of these drafting frames. We've got Paul Gallen who's lining up behind, so this could be a bit of a, a teammate play. Yeah, maybe. I don't know if he's quite close enough to better fit there. He's a little bit further back than he'd like to be, if that's the case. But yeah, it looks like that was the plan. So it'll be good to see how that's affected Paul Gallen. His best lap for the week is a 21.7. He hasn't yet set a time in this session. As he crosses the line, takes a little bit too much curve, and I think that actually uh, avoided the lap for him. Yeah, unfortunately, that'll wipe his time. Back to what we were talking about before, because now that uh, all of that was essentially time wasted. But uh, back into the pits and back to it. Well, the man on screen, Mitch McLeod, who's had, had a great qualifying run so far. He's fairly happy with his qualifying performance uh, at the moment, even though we've still got the last session in his pocket to go. But um, Mitch McLeod sitting in fourth place, so he's fairly chuffed, and it'll be interesting to see if he can just get a little bit more out of the foul. Yeah, any time you roll into final qualifying with a, a P5 starting spot, you've got to be happy. Oh, nice bit of work there from Muggo, just gets right out of his way like to see. Still oh, a bit of traffic, traffic coming up, but uh, these guys are all professionals, so they do their best not to uh, not to impede another driver. Great support to the chip, of course, is something we all like to see. It also does just go to show with what we were talking before as to uh, how critical it is to make sure you get a clean run at this track. Oh, speaking of clean run, he had a big moment there. Coming into the turn in, you got the rear end stepping out and uh, that lap over for Mitch McLeod, unfortunately. Yeah, as uh, as Hilly mentioned in his hot lap, it doesn't really look like much that corner, but it's actually slightly off canvas, so a very difficult place to get right. Man on screen, uh, TTR's newest recruit, Sean Kelly. Uh, it looks like he's going to abort this lap. Check out the Osram Falcon of uh, Wayne Burke, who looks like he might have a teammate in front of him there too. So, I wonder if this may come into play. Oh, no, he's had a bit of a moment there in front of him. So, no teammate for a drafting buddy there, but um, still got a pretty good lap going at the moment, I think. There's still a number of cars uh, nose to tail ahead, though, and uh, Paul Gallon and Clayton Brooks have actually uh, joined together once again. So, although that gap has opened up a bit, still trying to set something up, those. Uh, Get Supercar fan group cars, I think. Oh, oh big, big moment there. Oh, Hold on to a Berkey. Around he goes. <laughs> nice pirouette. He's kept it off the fence so fast. So. Oh, oh, a little kiss just at yes. the end there. Those Osram cars have been performing very well this season. So, um... Hopefully we'll see those guys continuing their, their current run of form. And yeah, the good thing is it hasn't... Brian. Sorry, mate, I'm not talking over you there, but it's good that it hasn't been just, you know, one. It's been both from Dean O'Brien and both both Dean O'Brien and Wayne Burke have had, had a great run the last couple of weeks. And um, they're probably the um, the guys to look out for. They're probably the dark horses of, uh, each and every week. You just never know. They've shown that they have got solid form and uh, they've managed to carry it on through the, the first couple of rounds. And uh, hard work definitely pays off.
Of course, a man on screen, Jared Fissel, he had uh, a great run in race of champions. A lot of people talking about him, and uh, tell you what, I don't think it's too far away from him being in the top split. I'd love to see what his numbers are as far as his, his eye rating, but um, once he makes top split, look out. Yeah, we've been told that he's a man to keep an eye on. There's a, a lot of a lot of people rating uh, rating Jared very highly, and uh, if he can continue his development and get himself into a strong bet supercar driver, he might be one to rock the boat in coming seasons as he progresses up through the uh, through the ranks here. Fairly tidy lap so far. He comes into this heavy deep braking zone down the hill hard on the brakes getting the car turned in for the left right oh he's grabbed a fair bit of curb there it looks tidy though he's doing everything he needs to be doing which is just focusing on you know, putting some solid laps together gaining race experience and that's what will pay off getting towards the front well, that lap didn't count so yep uh, might have just uh, grabbed a little bit too much curb Once again, just demonstrates how easy it is to do and the, the fine line that these guys are, are treading between the limit and uh, just beyond it. So we're 13 and a half minutes gone in this 20 minute session for final qualifying for round three of the series. Uh, hasn't been too many big moves in qualifying. The times are sort of there or thereabouts, but uh, I don't think too many people have made a, a huge mark just yet. Now, this is a car that's uh, gained a bit of attention recently, the Good Game Falcon of uh, John Emerson. Fantastic livery, and he's fighting very hard this lap. You can see he's using all of the road, all of the kerbs. And uh, he's shown some very strong form, of course, led a, a good portion of the race at Okiyama before uh, hitting trouble and was quite strong last week at Iron Park, so he'll be wanting to continue, no doubt, and hopefully he can be one to, to take the fight to the front. He's a race winner, of course, before, but uh, yeah, looking for that second win. Well, you would have thought that maybe he had that race sewn up, but you know, unfortunately, you know, it didn't sort of play out, but overall, you look at it, he's still, so he's only second third in the championship, so um, when you think about how much longer we've got to go in the season and drop rounds and everything else, um, things are still looking pretty good for the uh, good game Falcon. Definitely, the pace has been there. That's uh, that's not anything that we have to question. And uh, I reckon that we'll see uh, a win come together for this team sometime soon. Gets it turned in, nicely behaved there as he comes across the line with a 21 253. That's so, a very tidy run through the final corner there. Fastest time for the week at 20.9. So currently sitting in P6 for the moment. Shoot down the uh, timing screen at the moment. Um, we've got him in 21, P21 for the moment. His fastest time with a 21.6 for the week as he crosses the line. 21.7, so he's only a tenth off his fastest time for the week. Screen our tets.com Falcon driver of Josh Muggleton. Here in report, maybe be doing race runs, but no, I don't think so. He's strung two laps together there just to sort of get a feel for it, maybe. But it looks like he may be on a, a hot lap for the moment. moment there for Michael Fabian. Sorry, I was just trying to keep up with our director there, but um, so he's aborted that lap. <laughs> oh, big moment down the front straight there. Matty Barron's had uh, huge contact, so 
no doubt you'll start that one again. Not long remaining in the session now, just over uh, two minutes 40 left to go. So there's time for another lap or two from, from our drivers out there that haven't seen a whole lot of improvement at this time. Uh, currently at the top of the timesheets is Sean Kelly and he looks like he's out for another hot lap. Another driver using a lot of curve through the S's. And, uh, once we said this before, is a brilliant place to, to see exactly how a car is handling through those, through those bumps. Looks like he might be able to sniff a bit of a draft from one of the Overclockers AU cars. Might work nicely for him, but he's going to do the right thing to get out of the way, but Sean would love a bit of a draft and tries to grab what he can. He's currently eighth fastest of the week so far, coming into this final qualifying session. Yeah, 21.06 is his best lap so far, and he's come close in this session with a 21.1. Just looking for a little bit more to see if he can improve. It's interesting, there's not too many drivers here really, uh, you know, bothering the time sheets as such. So, just makes me wonder if it's different weather conditions or what. But, uh, well, it's going to show us a set of PV in the session at 21008. Nothing in it though, only uh, two hundredths of a second. It's probably the same as uh, what Matthew Hill said earlier that. Uh, They've been working so hard at it that they've managed to go in and already put very strong laps together in the build-up to the event. So preparation is, is key to these guys and, and they don't leave anything on the table. And of course that's the smartest way to go about it, isn't it? You know, punch out a time through the week and then you haven't got the pressure of final qualifying. Uh, you know, if you make a bit of a gain then that's good, but the last thing you want to do is leave it to the last minute. And of course it's so easy just to you know, not get your head right and put a good lap together or you could easily get walked by traffic. So, like these guys do, the smart thing is to do is, is punch a, some sort of time out through the week so they don't have to, you know, 100% rely on the final session. And of course, with a, uh, a race like tonight's race, 45 laps around this track, race pace is something that we guys have been spending a lot of time working on, figuring out those strategies, making sure you've got a setup that's going to be comfortable enough because it's going to be a long race. Yeah, 45 laps. Uh, the guys want to make sure they are in what part of the country they're in. It's a little bit warm in Vic today, so maybe a little uh, little desk fan or something to keep them cool. But um, yeah, 45 laps. It's, it's going to be a heck of a lot of fun, I reckon. Not wrong. Looking forward to it. And that's now uh, the session complete. Check and flag is out for our final qualifying session. So Mitch comes out of the uh, into the final turn now, crossing the start finish line. The 21165. So, still not near his fastest for the week, but uh, nevertheless, um, pretty hassle free. Hearing that maybe Josh Muggleton may have just got across the start finish line just before the checkered flag came out. So, he'll be our last man uh, on track to punch out a time. Got your end coming in chicane now. He had a good little toe there from Clayton Brooks. Those guys have definitely been working on it, but a bit of a slide coming out of the chicane, it seems. Yeah, it might just cost him just a little bit there. There we go, PB for uh, Scott, 21443. The last man on track, Josh Muggleton in his hats.com Falcon, comes out of the last couple of turns underneath the bridge. He'll come down the hill into the final right-hander. Let's we'll see what sort of time he can punch out. No one's really bothered him too much for his pole time. He crosses the line, only a 22-1. So he was just having a bit of fun there in the last lap. I'd say that'd be just about everything done there. Done that it can still be a very exciting bit of time out on track and we know it's going to make for a brilliant race tonight looking forward to it yeah, we'll quickly rattle off the top 10 for this session of course uh, final qualifying results will adjust a little bit when you take in consideration the uh, overseas servers but for the moment for this session Sean Kelly fastest over Mitch McLeod Josh Muggleton John Emerson Michael Fabian Dale Niche Wayne Burke Scott Uren Tony Ortridge and Ian Ford rounding out your top 10 
Well, we might uh, take a, a little break here at V8 Online, but stick around. We've got the main race, 45 laps around Road Atlanta coming up. So stick around. We'll be back in just a few minutes' time.
Welcome everyone to V8 Online's live and exclusive coverage of the iRacing.com V8 Supercars official online series. Proudly brought to you by good friends of V8 Supercar Fan Group, Direct Clutch Services, and our very own V8 Online Superstore. Stephen Sandman Clark and the host chair for V8 Online's coverage of round three of the iRacing V8 Supercar series from Road Atlanta, broadcasting in glorious high definition. And of course, joining me in the studio as always, my co driver this evening, Leo Gray. Leo, how are you going, mate? Going very well, Sandman. Very excited, very much looking forward to another fantastic night of racing here at V8s Online as we go to a classic track that everyone is so very fond of. And how are you, Sam, man? Good, mate. Pumped for this one. Uh, the guys got their work at it for them, 45 laps. And, um, mate, uh, I'm really, really keen about this racetrack. I'm, I'm actually <laughs> spewing we're in the commentary box because it's actually a really fun place to have the V8 supercar around. But um, it's only just one of the great stops we've got on our calendar for this season. That's right. So we're currently sitting at uh, round three of 12. And this is, of course, Road Atlanta. Fantastic racetrack and 45 laps for the boys tonight. But uh, after here, we're going to go, of course, to Phillip Island, which is a favourite track of many and a famous Australian circuit that we all know so well. But uh, from there, uh, Autodromo Carlos Pace, which is also known as Interlagos in Brazil. Mount Panorama, which, of course, how good is that? Cannot wait to be back at the mountain. Uh, then followed by Road America, Laguna Seca, Brands Hatch, the Watkins Glen Cup layout, VIR, and then Montreal to close out the season. So a fantastic schedule, a lot of brilliant tracks in there, and uh, it's all going to make for some awesome racing start to finish. Yeah, we're very lucky here at v Online uh, to bring you all the action. Of course, a man who we couldn't do it without uh, each and every week, a man who's got the finger on the pulse at all times, our very own Reese Gardner, thanks to Astro Gaming Headsets. How you going, mate? I'm not going too bad at all, Sandman. I'm looking forward to this race. Like you, I really love Road Atlanta, and I wish I was out there racing. It's one of the world's classic racetracks and one of America's best. But, uh, yeah, this is going to be the first um, race of the season, I believe, where the guys are going to be uh, doing a pit stop for fuel and for tyres because of the 45-lap race length. And uh, it would seem, uh, from listening in on the guys during qualifying, if you pit at the end of lap 19, you will need to save 6 litres of fuel in order to get to the finish. At the end of lap 20, you'll need to save three litres. And if you pit on lap 21, you will be able to make it home. But um, I am hearing hints that uh, some people will be trying their best to try and save a little bit of fuel every lap so that when they do pit for fuel, they'll be making their pit stops a little bit shorter. It's interesting. Isn't it? It's been good to actually hear some of these guys that are just going to save a bit of fuel just to, to make that pit stop shorter, just like you touched on. And uh, the guys that are actually going to absolutely wring its neck to see, uh, you know, if they could just pull a bit of a margin and, and not worry about that time save. So you got your work cut out for you, mate. I hope you've had plenty of oranges and uh, you'll be ready to go, no doubt. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, it's going to be an interesting race for sure for me and uh, also for different reasons because um, I've heard uh, hints when listening into the drivers during qualifying. Um, as you may or may not know, uh, viewers, iRacing recently introduced a 17 incident, uh, incident cap for the races. Basically, if the drivers get over 17 incident points, they will get disqualified from the race. So it's a little bit similar to the rules in the real V8 Supercar series where you can go off track a maximum of three times before the stewards hit you with a penalty. I did hear a couple of uh, drivers talking about um, possibly saving up um, potential incidents during the race that they can spend later on in the race to gain a tenth or two where needed. For example, at turn three, where uh, the inside of the track, if you cut it a little bit too much, you will get an off-track incident. But uh, who knows, we might see um, drivers taking advantage of uh, the limited amount of incidents they have in order to gain a bit of an advantage on their opponents. That's definitely a juicy bit of uh, goss you got there, Reese, because that, that is some of the strategy that you do see in, in the real V8 supercars. Of course, you've got to be careful at Turn 1 for Adelaide. Uh, when we're on the uh, streets at New Zealand, the, the, the back chicanes there, the guys had to be worried about how many times they hit the curbs there. So uh, it's interesting to see that these boys are sort of starting to carry over those thoughts here to the online series. Yeah, definitely adds a little bit of an extra element to the racing here at V8s Online. But uh, yeah, other, other than that, I'm looking forward to this race. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I'll be watching with bated breath and with my uh, um, Microsoft Word at the ready, typing down all the notes to bring you guys updates. All right, mate, we appreciate it. Uh, we'll let you go and get some rest and get you all pumped and ready to go, mate. Uh, we look forward to chatting you a little bit later on. Yeah, definitely. I'll see you guys then.
Cheers, mate. Uh, Leo, uh, interesting race and uh, uh, interesting turns here. At, uh, plenty of different undulations and, uh, you know, the guys got their work cut up for 45 laps and 12 turns around this joint. That's right. It's uh, just a touch over four kilometres long is Road Atlanta. Uh, 12 very challenging, very different turns on this circuit. And it's uh, a track that's got a lot of variety to it from those, those twisting S's that begin the lap uh, down to that long, long back straight that we'll see a lot of passing, a lot of drafting and a lot of braking duels into that tight chicane. It's a track that lends itself to excellent racing and uh, 45 laps tonight is going to be a brilliant challenge for the drivers and a fantastic spectacle for, uh, for all of us here watching. Before we run out of time, we've only about a minute or so to go before we start the race. We'll quickly run through qualifying order for round three here at Road Atlanta. Your pole sitter, and uh, well, he hasn't been stopped this season so far. It's uh, Josh Muggleton in the Tats.com Falcon. Second place is Richard Hampstead. Third, Renz Brookman. Fourth, Mitch, Mitch McLeod. In fifth, Matty Hill. In sixth, John Emerson. Sean Kelly in seventh. Lee Ellis in eighth. Var Richards in nine. James McKnight in tenth. 11th place, we've got Michael Fabian, Adrian Stratford in 12th, Wayne Burke in 13th, Bo Cubis in 14th, Bo Cattell in 15th, Scott Uren in 16th, Tony Autridge in 17th place. In 18th, you've got Tobias Azerni. In 19th, it's Ian Ford. In 20th place, you've got Marla McMullen. And in 21st place, you've got Dylan Golson. In 22nd, it's Michael Schreyer. 23rd, Dean O'Brien. Matthew Barron in 24th and uh, Mate Lorenzi in 25th place. So 25 cars around here. The guys have, um, it's going to be an interesting uh, run into two, one, I tell you. The thing I noticed there is that we've got a full grid, 25 cars, 25 drivers here at Road Atlanta. Cannot wait for this one. Drivers forming up now and it's going to be an explosive beginning to this race as everyone jostles for position into turn one. Of course, one thing we'll keep an eye on is uh, that pit strategy. Is I think that uh, we've just had a bit of a technical drama there with Sandman. And uh, hopefully that's... Hopefully yeah. that was sort of selfie. He's back there. Uh, <laughs> there Sandman, go. you've gone for a bit of a walk there. <laughs> Good old technical issues, mate. Uh, couldn't live without him, eh? Uh, that's all right. But back in time. We've got 25 cars on the grid. The lights are up. Josh Muggleton, pole position. Revs rise. Green flag. And we're great Racing for round three. Atlanta. Oh, someone didn't start. Who's had a shocker of a start? Renz. Renz, Renz Brookman. Brookman. Did not get away and he got collected on the line from behind. I didn't see who it was, but uh, he's dropped well back to the field. Oh, and this is Renz Oh, big incident, a massive crash. We've got a number of cars backwards here, back right down to turn one. Huge incident, maybe that was a concertina effect from the start of the race. Friends Brookman not getting a great start, but a huge incident, turn number one. Oh, I don't know what it was, but it was a total mess. There was a number of drivers involved, at least two or three cents spinning sideways around. Uh, looks like it might have been... Jeez, you, you can't tell, but there were three white guns in turn one, and it's, uh, it's never pretty. Crazy start. Looks like Rems Brookman, Scott Urena are involved. If we check out our race recall replay, but unbelievable start going into turn one. We said turn one may be a little bit crazy, but um, it's just caught out a couple of people there, unfortunately. Uh, quite a remarkable event there, but uh, back at the front, we're live here. Josh Muggleton has managed to hold on to his lead, but Richard Hampstead putting massive pressure on down into the chicane. So it's been a, a good start for those two drivers. They had a fantastic fight here last season. That one's a bit across the line. That's the one that's completed. Up to lead to Hampstead, Emerson, Cloud, Hill, Ellis, Kelly, Richies and McKnight, your top ten. But, uh... Oh, oh, team McKnight had a big moment there coming off the front straight. We already saw how easy it was to catch a couple of guys out in qualifying. And, um, and we've also touched on those off tracks. You've really got to keep them up your sleeve. You don't want to be using them on that one. Look at this train of cars, there's nothing separating them. Just all the way through the field, everyone is, is, is just within you know, tenths of seconds of each other. It's remarkable. We've had a, uh, someone drop into the pits there. It's Matthew Barron who's pulled in obviously from damage on that first lap. 
Yeah, gut-wrenching stuff for these guys. We said 45 laps around here, so it's almost a mini enduro for these guys. The last thing you need is contact in turn one. Obviously, it was a bit of a Constantine effect. Uh, obviously, um, it was Rens Brooklyn and didn't get away to the greatest of starts. Maybe he didn't have um, first gear selected. Not quite sure. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to chat to him a little bit later. But um, unfortunately, he never actually got caught up in that turn one incident. Great little fight here on screen. We've got uh, Sean Kelly and Lee Ellis. Ellis had the position. Sean Kelly takes it up the inside. Textbook pass and chicane. That's going to move him up to position six. Whoa, bit of a battle behind that with uh, Cuba Stratford and Fabian. You don't want to run too wide through that final corner. They sort themselves out, but Stratford's going to be under massive pressure from behind. It's Tony Aldridge putting pressure on, uh, on Stratford there. Smart driving by Adrian because the last, exactly what you said, mate. The last thing you want to be, it's hard enough going with their single file. You want to go to the side by side, forget about it. Adrian did the smart thing and thought about what the overall result would probably end up like and got out of it. It was smart bit of driving. Yeah, long way to go, of course. Currently lap three of 45, so of course, discretion the better part of valor. You shouldn't fight uh, if it's going to cause, cause problems for you, which uh, Stratford was smart enough to back out of that one. man up front the Tats.com Falcon Josh Muggleton just got himself just a little bit of breathing space there over Richard Hampstead in second place and course, that's what he needs and I think a little bit different for him he's, he's been used to having his uh, tail gunner there for the last couple of races and uh, Madison down obviously missing tonight but um, Muggo's doing a great job holding his own in the opening laps Don Emerson also looks like he's going with these guys in terms of lap times they were all down in the 21 second range for uh, the second lap of the race there so, see if that will close up and uh, just behind that back in the top five maybe a massive pressure from uh, Sean Kelly Kelly's already made the move uh, past Lee Ellis to get up into position six and he's got his sights set now on, uh, on Matthew Hill he's been showing some great pace in the opening lap hasn't he he's got, got pretty, uh, he's pretty keen to get the job done on his teammate and uh, now he's ready to snuffle up another one so um, I don't think it looks like he's going to be saving fuel. He's just going to get on with it, bring its neck, and then uh, see what sort of uh, gap he can get on these guys. But it's um, looking good so far. This track, as we mentioned, it really shows uh, how a car is handling with some of these parts, especially the S's, shows a, a good handling car. And that, of course, is going to lead to confidence in the vehicle, which the way you can pass here, it's really going to be obvious who's comfortable with their vehicle. And Don Kelly looks like he's one of those guys right now. and see what sort of draft uh, you can get from the back of Matty Hill. Of course, Matty stopped by earlier and gave us our hot lap, so we appreciate Matty taking his time out in the TTL Falcon, but um, definitely got his work cut up for him now. Sean Kelly just starts to get a bit of a sniff of the draft down that long straightaway. He's there, we'll ride on board with Kelly into the braking zone. Tucks the nose out and uh, going to complete the pass. Nice. It's exactly where he got his teammate the last lap round, so nice bit of driving. He's on the move and uh, looks like he's pretty happy with that uh, hot simulator Falcon. Ellis is going to see if he can, uh, if he can follow through as well on, uh, on Hill. Didn't quite manage to sneak up the inside, but just having a think about it. Uh, I don't think that they're going to be that polite when there's only a couple of laps to go. Tell you what, it wasn't all that long ago I was starting to uh, blow old John Muggleton's horn there. He was um, starting to open up a bit of a margin there, but uh, looks like he's starting to get his hands full there. Hasn't he ever? This is uh, looking very much like the battle that we just followed with uh, Dylan Kelly. That this time it's Hampstead putting pressure on Muggleton. He's going to try and get a good run out of these two right-handers down onto that long, long back straight. Well, this I wonder could be... if... Uh, sorry, carry on, Simon. Sorry, mate, I was just going to say, maybe he's uh, thinking the same move that Kelly just pulled the uh, lap before, but he actually lost a bit of margin there coming onto that back straight away. Yeah, so I was actually going to say that uh, if he tries the same move that, uh, that Kelly did, perhaps uh, Mogleton won't make it as easy. So a little bit of breathing space. He had, um, there was, oh, looks like uh, Hampstead got in there nice and deep there, but um, Hampstead three tenths quicker last time round, but um, that margin has now closed up again. Uh, Hampstead really good under brakes into that final section. Yes, he was very strong at Road Atlanta last time out. Uh, that was late in, in the last season, and there was a fantastic battle between these two drivers, so very good to see that's continued on. Also worth pointing out that Lee Ellis has completed the move on, uh, on Matthew Hill. 
move though, that moves Ellis up into 6th place. Hill however is still having a bit of a look, so this could be a fight to continue. Yeah, that's exactly right, it, um, you've seen how the last couple of laps, how, he got, how he's been passed, so we've touched on that um, there's quite a significant gain you can have if you tucked up behind each other uh, down that back straight, so if he can get close enough, he can probably get that position back. Oh, a little bit of a moment, a wiggle on the exit there, the turn just caught the uh, ring strip, manages to hold on to it, but just gives up a little bit of ground there to Lee Ellis, and that uh, works in the favour of Mar Richards. Big, big fight deeper in the field. We've got uh, who's in there? Dean O'Brien and Wayne Burke, the Osram cars, as well as Marlon McMullen, Ian Ford, Michael Schreyer, all over each other. Tony Ortridge currently leading that little battle pack, but there's six cars in a line behind him, all wanting to try and move through this field. Oh, Marlon. Marlon looks like he's going to try and make a bit of a move there on Wayne Burke. Looks like he's got a nice run. He'll have the position as he comes into the braking zone. So as long as he's confident there under brakes, he'll get the job done. But Wayne's going to fight round. But oh, nice job actually getting the uh, margin back around the outside. Yeah, did a great job to hang on there. Oh, Marlon's Ooh. going to try the outside. Don't want to do that. It's uh, it looks to me like Wayne is maybe having a bit of connection problems here. His car doesn't want to settle on the road, and that sometimes that's an indication of perhaps connection dramas. Hopefully, that's not going to. Uh, not going to affect these guys in a bad way. Bit of a battle just behind that uh, Bocatel and Dylan Wilson. Wilson came off second best and uh, he tried to go one on one with the, the turn three chicane and uh, had to duck in the escape road. He'll continue on without any dramas. We we'll quickly check out the action up front. It's Josh Muggleton leading over Richard Hampstead. Uh, not much in it between these guys. Of course, very, very early stages of this race. So maybe Hampstead's just sitting there, just uh, looking after his tyres and not worrying too much. He knows what sort of advantage he can get down that straightaway with the draft. So maybe he's just sort of. He wants to get in the right position, and when he gets towards the back half of this uh, this lap, then he can start thinking about that long back straight away. Yeah, Hampstead was about a tenth, second, tenth of a second quicker the last time by, so he could be doing what we were speaking about earlier, just biding his time, being a bit patient, and uh, seeing if that can pay off when it comes time to make a pit stop. Because, of course, it's all going to come down to the last couple of laps here if you've got enough grit to go hard to the finish but he's putting pressure on Muggleton got a good run out of that corner onto this this little section of straight but right all over him in this double right hander a small little bit of a correction there and the steering he had to open up the steering and uh, got a little bit sideways as we were on board there with Richard Hampstead but loses that advantage again uh, coming onto that back straight that seems to be what it's hurting him at the moment that's happened uh, twice now, it seems. So uh, what that can tell us, perhaps, is that Josh Muggleton's car is handling really well. He must be quite comfortable to be able to make as much ground as he is through that difficult uh, difficult right-hander and such a critical part of track two. It's time to catch up with our man in the pits. He's got his finger on the pulse. It's Reese Gardner, thanks to Astro Gaming Headsets. Hey, guys. Uh, yeah, I've been listening in, and I've got a couple of updates from various uh, people during the race. Um, I've currently got a bit of an update from Matt Burgess from Overclockers AU concerning Michael Fabian who's currently running in 10th after making a, a pass uh, at the end of that previous lap. Um, that was a bit of an interesting one but um, he, um, I've been told that they're looking to make up some spots because there's some nice bunching up happening in the midfield where he is right now. Um, and I've also got a bit of an update from uh, further up in our uh, team speak from uh, Desmond Hallam concerning V8's online founder Jay Kennedy who is um, back to racing the V8 after retiring from main commentary duties. He's in split three at the moment, running fourth after having started ninth. And that's all I've got for now. Thanks for the update there, Reese. No doubt we'll be talking you a fair bit tonight. But uh, current battle on track, we've got Matthew Hill under pressure from Val Ritchie's. And 
these guys are part of a, a bigger fight, as you can see on screen. Quite a number of cars who stay very close together here at this place. Also why we like it so much. You see Val Rich, he looks like he's just blinking a little bit there, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, that's uh, all over the back of Matty there. So the only advantage here for Matty is that it's happening behind him. The last thing you need is someone to be blinking around. Oh, big moment there for Hilly. He had a big wiggle coming onto the main straight, but managed to hold position. So, oh, we've got a smoker back there. Looks like someone's lunched an engine. That's McKnight. Uh, maybe just a bit greedy on the downshift and pop she goes. So unfortunately, it's going to be race over for James McKnight. We'll see if we can jump on board for a replay, see if we can tell exactly what happened. It's all gone up in smoke for James McKnight. Yeah, it looks like just on the downshift, unfortunately, there. Just uh, a little bit too aggressive and, uh, well, pop goes the weasel. Yeah, not good. Something it is good, though, is the fight back up the front. This is continuing to close up. Now back within half a second is uh, is Hampstead on Muggleton. So Muggle hasn't been able to run away from the, the TTL Falcon. Putting big pressure in the braking zone at the chicane here. Just uh, interested to see, it looks like um, it's hard to see if, if Muggo's struggling with brakes or just hammers that much better on brakes, but um, always into that zone, uh, Hampstead makes up so much margin. I'm wondering if it's a setup thing because uh, we've seen how good Muggleton is at the top part of the circuit, but at the same time, Hampstead's able to close up big time under brakes, so I don't know what that would be, but these cars are definitely behaving in a different manner to each other. You've got to love this gearbox view when you can just see where Hampstead's positioned in his car as far as where Muggleton is, and you can see what little places on the racetrack where he starts to make that margin up too. Yeah, especially through these S's. Really shows how the guys are going to place their car in a different position and uh, just how tidy they're being through there. I still think that Muggleton's car looks quite steady, but uh, both of these guys look very good. Muggleton, especially in the slow speed corners. This one here we were talking about. See, he gets just such a good run, whereas Hampstead looks a little bit taily on the exit. But he's still able to close up big time down into the chicane. Yeah, I think, like you said, the one thing that's working in uh, Muggo's favour is getting the power down out of that last turn, and he doesn't have to worry too much about that braking gain. Have a look at it when you can see just how much he closes up. Hampstead right to the back there of Muggleton, but because he's so far back, Muggleton just needs to hold his line, and he's uh, he hasn't got too much of a threat there. Just behind that, though, uh, John Emerson in the Good Game Falcon has got Mitch McLeod for company. So the fight for the final podium spot is starting to heat up. How's this battle? Marlon McMullen looking up the inside here of Audrey. Can he get to top done? You don't want to go side by side. They've got to give plenty of racing room and they do. Nice bit of driving, plenty of sportsmanship there, but it looks like he may lose another position. Audrey just now got Ian Ford up the inside. I tell you what, Ian Ford was thinking about making three wide. He, uh, he wanted to, but then decided not to, and geez, they're still going at it. Autridge trying to hold on on the outside and does so. They make side to side contact. But now Ford will have a look up run. He's got the inside. Oh, they've got to be careful. They've given each other plenty of racing room, but while they've done that, Marlon McMullen has been able to skip away. Oh, that was a fantastic job by both of these drivers not to have that go into the fence because it could have so easily. Autridge going to run defensive down into the uh, into lead up to his right hand, but Ford side by side in the break zone. Going to try a crossover move. Oh, has he got enough? Can he get it there? Not quite, but nice bit of driving. Plenty of racing room between these two. If Ford can get a good run, look like he just got a little bit squirrely, but he needed to get a good run and stay right tucked up underneath the back of Audrey. He couldn't quite get it done. As you said, though, Sandman, how much they're fighting and all that side-by-side -side running just kills so much time because Mullen McMullen just managed to skip away. Now we see Val Ruchis has managed to get the job done on Matty Hill. So Matty's just given up a, a couple of spots in the last few laps and uh, finds himself back in eighth place now. Yeah, still hanging on strong though. Just got to keep it all together by the time the pit stop rolls around. A long way to go. Currently on lap 13 of 45, so plenty of racing left to go. Now, uh, 
pair of drivers I did want to touch on again was those two Osram cars slowly working their way through the field. Now once again, same place and track, same exact time. They've been like this uh, all three races so far. Nothing separating them. <laughs> yeah, plenty of consistency between these guys. And uh, tell you what, if they keep this sort of charge up and as the season goes on, they're not going to just have one car up the front. They're going to have both of them up there. So if these guys just keep plugging away at it, it's not easy to get right up to the pointy end of the field. But these guys are doing a great job. Hearing uh, reports that um, might have been some dramas here with Ian Ford. Looks like Bo Cattell's managed to get a position off him. Look at this battle here Michael Fabian and Adrian Stratford coming onto the front straight away. Stratford's had an exciting race so far, seeing him and oh, another one's blown, another one. Another one. Who's, Who's that? that? It's Hilly. Matty Hill's blown an engine going into turn one. Looks like the same sort of problem again. Down shifting into the turn and his race is over on lap 14. Heartbreak for uh, for my, Matthew Hill there. But uh, yeah, not much to say about that. It's actually catching uh, a lot more people out than we normally see in, uh, in a lot of races. Here at the action on the race recall replay. He did a good job just to get out of everyone's way. You could see that there was a pack of cars coming up from behind him and just pulled off the racetrack. And uh, unfortunately, it's race over for Hilly. Back up front, though, things are tighter than they've ever been. Amstead had a, a good run down the back straight that time around and had a good draft up. Just maybe had a little bit of a look, but not close enough to, to put a move on Josh Muggleton. And so they'll cross the line for another lap complete. She's both of them a little bit wide coming on the front straight. Geez, I'd love to see what this uh, incident count that uh, everyone's got on board because uh, when you've only got 17 up your sleeve and it's uh, 45 laps around here, you've got to be real careful. They're pushing each other very hard. And I think we'll see this going on for quite a while. Ham Hampstead getting a little bit of dirt through the S's. Both these cars riding the curves very well, though, it seems. Uh, still just behaving in slightly different ways to each other, which, of course, is what we like to see, having two different cars performing in two different ways with strengths and weaknesses. That's what makes for good racing. So you want to... Um been doing a great job this season, Josh Muggleton. He's got plenty of pressure there from behind. I know there's probably a couple of people thought that uh, he had it easy with his teammate behind him, but there's no love lost between those guys. Once the green flag's out, there's no team orders, and uh, uh, Madison Down and Josh Muggleton push each other as hard as they do anyone else. So it's the same sort of pressure that he's used to, except this time, this time it's a different paint scheme. It's Richard Hampstead behind him, but um, he's really been uh, one of the strong drivers since he claimed that championship uh, last season. It was a uh, a nice little sort of monkey off the back of it, and now he's sort of getting on with it. So look at this action here, Bo Cattell managed to get the position done on Autridge. Looks like he's got his hands full. Seems like uh, we might continue to be having a, a bit of problems with their man at the moment. Hopefully that won't be too much of a drama, but continuing on, we're looking at Bocatel at the moment, who's got Tony Autridge and Ian Ford fighting hard behind him, so hopefully Bo will be able to skip away, as uh, Marlon Mullen did a couple of laps earlier. And uh, Adrian Stratford, who were following just before he's managed to put the move on Michael Fabian and it seems to be pulling away. Fabian going to have a bit of pressure from Bo Cubis in one of the Altitude Brighton Volvo cars. Another great looking new car to join the series for this season.
This view out the back of uh, Michael Fabian's car is going to tell us a lot about the different way these guys are handling. You can see the different lines they're taking already through these final corners. Fabian looks like he's doing very well through that final corner compared to, uh, to Bo. But uh, the S's is where we really see these guys know what they're made of. A lot of different ways to skin a cat, as they say. And this part of the track is probably the best one to, to demonstrate that. This car looks like it is using the curves pretty well. But uh, Fabian also closing up on the back of Stratford here. So we've got a nice little three car battle on our hands. Back up the front though, uh, Richard Hampstead once again putting pressure on Josh Muggleton. He's still just poking the nose out, but not quite there. He closes up so tight under brakes. Barely a bumper's link between the two cars at that point of track. It just seems that uh, Muggleton is so strong up the top end of the racetrack that he's uh, able to carry that speed all the way through down to the back straight. And that's really how he's staying in front. Just uh, keeping his nose clean, eyes forward, not really paying too much attention to the pressure behind, but he's getting a lot of it from Richard Hampstead here. Hampstead riding very close through the S's, so interesting to see how that will play out. But uh, just behind them though, the fight for the final podium spot. John Emerson still currently holding it down. But uh, Mitchell McLeod and Sean Kelly, who's made a couple of strong moves in this race. Looks like he's ranging up onto the back of this battle. They're all punching in pretty comparative lap times. And uh, that top five well clear of the rest of the field in terms of pace at this point in time. We'll have a look now and see the big movers in the field. Got a lot of guys that have been uh, making moves, a lot of passes being made, but Dean O'Brien is the big winner so far. Currently running a position 11, up 12 spots from his, uh, his starting position. That was 23rd where he began this race from, did Dean. So driving very strong there. Marlon McMullen also a big mover, up seven. And uh, down on the other side of the page, of course, some guys that had drama. Matty Hill, James McKnight, both with blown ends, and of course, Renz Brookman with uh, contact in the opening lap. But uh, the guys who haven't made any position changes at the moment, Josh Muggleton and Richard Hampstead, closer than ever. I think Hampstead is now putting most pressure on it. He has been able to all race. This has gotten really tight up the front and we're going to be nearing pit stops soon. We're currently on lap 19. Did hear that uh, lap 20 or 21 would be enough to get you home. So it would be very good to see how these two play out. Whether maybe Hampstead might have been saving a bit of fuel to do a short stop, try and jump Muggleton in the pits. Whether they're going to try to pit at the same lap or whether one might try and dive in a bit earlier to get the advantage of fresh tyres. That's exactly what I was thinking, mate. Uh, I was probably thinking maybe uh, Hampstead would probably dive in maybe the lap before if he could and take that advantage on fresh rubber. But um, it can work either way. And, of course, as guys get caught up in lap traffic, that can change a lot of things too. And with the pace these, these guys are running, they can't afford to be saving fuel, I don't think. I reckon that uh, with how quickly these guys are moving, it's going to just have to be a case of in for tyres, fuel, and just hammer it out. But uh, looks like the first one in, John Emerson from position three. So he was having a very strong run, and he's the first to peel in. I think he's going to have to save from what we were saying. He's have to save three litres of fuel. Fabian in as well. Yeah, the guys will still have their work cut up for him. Just to save, like you said, a couple of litres of fuel just to go the race distance. But the advantage you do get when you pick this time, you get the fresh rubber and you get to have a challenge a little bit later. So um, it'll be good to see how it all plays out. A couple of guys taking that, that choice now. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how much longer the, the leaders wait because they've got their battle between Muggleton and the Hampstead. There's nothing in it between those two. But they've got a good four or five second margin back to where Emerson and uh, Mitch McLeod were battling. We also had uh, Wayne Burke in the pits there. John Emerson completes your stop, 22.3 seconds for a full tank of fuel and four tyres. Fabian out with a 
and uh, Wayne Burke should be not far behind a 23-8. So that's the first three in, and uh, I wonder how many takers we'll have this time by. Oh, we're hearing a big incident for Dean O'Brien. Looks like he's made contact with the wall. And whilst that's happening, both leaders in at the same time on the same lap. Hampstead pushing hard into the pits. He nearly drilled the back of the Tats.com Falcon. So it's going to be a battle, battle of the pit crews between these guys to see who can get out in front of each other. We'll see if we can find a, uh, a race record replay of, of what happened to Dean O'Brien. He had a, a, a bit of trouble there. Looked like he just gassed it up a little bit too much coming out of the corner. And uh, also looks like oh. Hampstead overshot his pit box. Yeah, that's going to cost him some time. That'll work right into the hands of Josh Muggleton. He should be able to get a faster stop because uh, Hampstead will give away a couple of seconds just missing his mark. And John Emerson is going to be the man to follow at the moment, see if he can make any time out. And uh, Muggleton is away with a 22-7. Hampstead still left sitting in his pit bay out with a 26-4. Wow. So that's, uh, that's a big, big time loss. Oh, he's got to be clear, careful because uh, Emerson might snaffle him up here. He's there. Good game, Falcon is right on the back of Richard Hampstead. But uh, Hampstead won't need him to be saving any, saving any fuel, so he can just push right on. Geez, how much does Josh Muggleton love that? Just to have that little bit of breathing space as the race goes on. Oh, and it's right when he was coming under the, uh, the biggest amount of pressure from Richard Hampstead. So he did a fantastic job to be able to withstand that pressure and uh, the hard work has paid off. Also got Sean Kelly, who's uh, made the dive into pit lane as well. There are a number of takers on that lap. There's only a handful of guys left out at the moment. We've got... Uh, Marlon McMullen, he's dived into now. Yes, yep. Mitch McLeod is currently the leader on the road, but he should be in. Uh, not far from now. Bo Cattell, he's in pit lane. Scott Uren, oh, looks like he's got to be careful. Scotty may have uh, been very close to um, making contact with the uh, pit wall there. He did. He's actually made hard contact. Scott Uren coming straight into the pits. He's locked him up, looks like, and he's made heavy, heavy contact to the pit lane wall. See if we can find this on a race recall replay, but uh, that could be a big drama for Scott Uren. Could have either bent the steering, could have caused even more trouble from there so yeah that stuff can hurt you just see he's gone in just too hot and uh and slapped the concrete there not a nice thing to experience i guess the only benefit it is it's um he's done it coming into the pit lane so he can opt to get that uh, damage fixed for it uh, but it is going to cost him quite a few seconds yeah going to be a long stop for repairs race leader mitch mcleod into the lane And uh, Lee Ellis inherits the lead of the race. Continues on for another lap. So Mitch's teammate, Adrian Stratford, he's going to join pit lane as well. It's always interesting this time when you see uh, the guys have uh, different strategies. Some people stay out a little bit longer, but um, the guys that have come in, they, they're they sort of leaving it till now. They don't have to worry about saving fuel. They can pretty much um, bring these cars next all the way home so they don't have to worry about saving a leader or two. And we might cross to our man uh, in the pits, uh, Reese Gardner, thanks to Astro Gaming Headsets. Uh, yeah, guys, I've been listening in further, and um, now that most of the field have made their pit stops, I just want to say I've been watching Michael Fabian. I have been told by Matt Burgess, the uh, the control man at Overclockers, to keep an eye on Michael Fabian because he's on tyres that are a lap fresher than um, than Val Richie's in front of him. I am led to believe. I could be wrong on that, but uh, yeah, it looks like um, Fabs is really hounding Vale for ninth place. Good work, Reese. Uh, we love hearing all that stuff, and uh, we look forward to catching up with you a little bit later. But appreciate your time, mate. Uh, good effort to, to listen in. I know a lot of teams there giving you all different information, but uh, you're doing a great job, mate. Yeah, see, it seems like some, some teams not just giving me the wrong information, but a lot of them are staying very quiet. It's uh, it's quite it's quite a tense atmosphere in uh, all the different team speaks at the moment. It's uh, very hard to to get information, but when I do, it's um, it's it's quite interesting. Also got um, Lee Ellis in pit lane as we check out the uh, Bo Cubis on screen. 
Yeah, he's putting big pressure on the Osram Falcon of Wayne Burke. These guys uh, came out of the pits right on top of each other and Adrian Stratford was nearly able to capitalise too. This is one of my favourite parts of the race, this intense couple of laps where everybody's made their pit stop. They're punching out the quickest out laps that they can possibly string together just to try and make any sort of advantage. And it makes for great battle there. Looks like everyone has uh, has been through the pits for their, for their service with the exception of Tobias Cerny. He's uh, our current race leader, but of course still to make a pit stop. So he's doing a great job. He's gone uh, 24 laps uh, on this tank of fuel so far, but his times last time round are 122.799 compared to Josh Muggleton's 21.650. So the times aren't quite there, and Muggo's really starting to close in on him now as they head towards the back straight. Hearing that uh, Scott Uren's car just too bent, it wasn't looking good out there, and he's managed to come into the pits once more. So either for more repairs or hopefully not to retire but yeah he's he's parked it i was just looking at the lap times that time around sandman and uh, a driver i've noticed who's putting out some quick times is sean kelly currently sitting in position six currently putting big pressure on uh, on mitch mcleod his lap time was actually a shade faster than josh muggleton's last time around making him the quickest driver on track Field's just about to cleanse itself now as Tobias Zerny heads into pit lane. So that hands the lead over to Josh Muggleton. He's got himself a nice little margin there over Richard Hampstead. That gap is going to be about two seconds. Uh, no, no, so is it five seconds? 5.2 seconds he's got up his sleeve. Yeah, of course, that's about the, uh, the time loss that Richard Hampstead got from overshooting his pit bay. So if that hadn't happened, those two would have been all over each other such a fine margin that these guys are having to balance and uh, it's gone in the favour of Josh Muggleton this time. Yeah, well Hampstead's really going to have his work cut out for him because uh, last lap round 21-4 for Hampstead, 21-6 for Josh Muggleton. So he had two tenths up his sleeve but um, 20 laps to go. Of course, uh, anything can happen. We've seen so many different things that play out with uh, your harmless spins, uh, accidents and of course blown engines. So you don't want to wish that on anyone but um, 20 laps is still a long way to go around. It is, but the thing is when you're a, a top quality driver like Muggleton is and when you've managed to get yourself essentially five to three seconds over your nearest competitor, you know that you can take things a little bit easier. He's gonna have a little bit of breathing room that he can use to his advantage just to try and uh, build a bit of a safeguard and, and do everything he can to secure a victory today. This little battle down the back straight, uh, Bo Cubis, uh, well Wayne Burke, Bo Cubis and Adrian Stratford, but Stratford trying to make a move up the inside, he's got a nice little bit of a toe there for the draft, has a look up the inside, great breaking there and gets the job done, nice work Adrian Stratford. That was a fantastic move, but Bo Cubis is uh, going to poke his nose in and see if he can get the position back, not going to happen there, but this has been a good little fight since the pit stops. See, I'm not the only one having internet issues tonight too. It's like these boys on track have got their work cut out for them. Wayne's been, Wayne's been flicking around a little bit uh, from the start there, but it looks like uh, Stratford may be a little bit too. A bit further up the road from this, we've got uh, Michael Fabian and Lee Ellis locked in a tight little battle. Fabian running P7, Ellis in P8, putting pressure on the back of the overclockers forward. Gonna have a bit oh. of a poke up here. We've not seen overtaking happen at this part of the track. And uh, brave little look in from Ellis. Yeah, I think it was a, a, just a, a little bit of dive just to sort of put Fabian maybe off his game a little bit. But um, of course, out of the two, Ellis has probably got the freshest tyres. He only just came into his pit stop not long ago. So uh, he's got the fresher tyres of two out there and he's looking to carry a bit of this draft down this back straight. Can he get the job done? Up the inside, he's certainly getting the car position. He's going to look up the inside, gets on the brakes and he'll get the job done side by side as he goes into the turn. Nice drive there and nice move up the inside of Michael Fabian. Yeah, it was a brilliant bit of driving. Just poking the nose in, seemed to unsettle uh, Fabian at the top of the hill and that run to the back straight. He did the same thing again and, and seemed to push Fabian a little bit wide, which gave him the, the run that he needed to be able to complete a move into the chicane. So a great bit of driving by Ellis, moving himself up into seventh position. And he's going to set his sights now on Val Ritchie's. Yeah. 
can't sort of work out who what happened here. But Kelly's um, on the move. He's got he's got that position over McLeod now. We saw early in the race it was McLeod trying to chase down Emerson, but um, Kelly's been the one on the move now. Find himself up in the fourth place after starting back in seventh. He's on the pace now, Kelly. Now that he's cleared Mitch McLeod, see uh, how he can open up the legs on the the TTR Falcon. But uh, a big, big gap from Kelly in position four up to Emerson, who's currently holding down the final podium spot. But still some great little fights all the way through the field. It's still a track that lends itself to fantastic racing. And uh, really giving us everything we were hoping for tonight. Yeah, good time to uh, check out our gains and losses you got in there, uh, Leo. Yeah, of course, after the pit stops, things will have changed, but um, Looking through here, the big move is still Marlon McMullen. Uh, Mate Lorensky seems to have made up seven positions from his starting spot. It's, of course, when you flick over the other side of the page, we see the heartbreak stories of uh, Matthew Hill, James McKnight, and Renz Brookman all losing massive spots from, uh, from dramas in the race. Check out the action up front. It's uh, Josh Muggleton got himself. Uh, that margin's now 4.3 seconds over Richard Hampstead. So Hammers are pretty keen to punch out those times. Uh, Muggleton 22-0 last time round to Hampstead's 21-6. So got himself in the vicinity of three to four tenths of a second a lap. So really on the charge is Hampstead after that uh, unfortunate uh, miscue in pit lane. They're nice and consistent with those lap times. Still over 15 laps left in this motor race, so there's plenty of time, plenty that can happen within those uh, those number of laps. Runs a little bit wide onto the front straight though, so you can see just how hard Hampstead's pushing. I tell you what, Muggo stepped it up a notch. He must have seen those times uh, fluctuating a little bit because uh, Muggleton now he's on par with him. He's back to 21 sixes. So. This is the one thing that Muggleton's got up his sleeve is that he can just take it easy. He knows that uh, if Hampstead wants to chase him down, he's really going to have to use up the best part of his tyres. So if Muggleton can uh, hold on to his rubber and uh, if Hampstead does get close enough, he'll know he have a little bit in reserve to battle him uh, later on if that's uh, how it all plays out. Just touching on the, uh, the battle we were following a little bit earlier. Adrian Stratford has managed to complete the move on Wayne Burke. The move Stratford up uh, one more notch into the top ten. This is the fight for ninth, tenth, and eleventh. Of course, Bo Cubis putting big pressure on Wayne Burke as well. The sole oh. remaining Osram car left in the race, but doing a good little job in top ten. Dean O'Brien, of course, had contact earlier in the race, which unfortunately put him out. Well, Josh Muggleton comes onto the front straight. He'll start lap 30. We'll quickly go through the top 10. It's Josh Muggleton leading over Richard Hampstead, John Emerson, Sean Kelly, and Mitch McLeod. That's your top five. Then you've got Val Richies, Lee Ellis, Michael Fabian, Adrian Stratford, and Wayne C. Burke rounding out your top 10. There's been a lot of up and down happening here. You know, there's guys come and gone from the pace we saw as we mentioned McLeod moving up earlier and dropping back a little bit Sean Kelly has made some big moves through the field Richie's is having a bit of a quiet race uh, by himself there in sixth place but uh, Sean Kelly still punching out some very strong lap times right up there on pace with with Hammer and nearly with Muggleton I guess the only disappointing thing for Kelly is he's, he's got to find what almost four and a half seconds to get in touch with that uh, Emerson for that final step on the podium. So a lot of margin there to close up, but uh, yeah, definitely been the mover when he started back in seventh place. You could see in the early stages, he was just sort of plucking them off one by one and looked like he was fairly pacey and he's definitely carrying that pace as this race goes on. Now, we mentioned it earlier before, uh, Lee Ellis, when he got past Michael Fabian, would try and move on to uh, Val Ritchie's. And he's done that. He's now within a second of uh, Val Ritchie's, who's in sixth place. Who hasn't had much company, it seems, this race so far, but that could change in a couple of laps, I think. Ellis is trying to get together some pretty good laps and has just been slowly nibbling away. But he might have a 
have a fighter on his hands in a second. I guess that's one of the benefits too of picking a little bit later. Absolutely, Ellis was um, one of the later later drivers to make their pit stops, and of course that's the advantage you carry through towards the end of the race. Just having those couple of extra laps up your sleeve uh, on uh, tyre rubber can benefit you, and uh, like I said, he is just slowly starting to pull that margin in on bail. While we get a chance, we might uh, cross to our man, Reese Gardner, for a bit of a, an update on uh, the second split that's going on. Reese, you there, mate? Thanks to Astro Gaming Headsets. Uh, yes, I am here, Sandman, and I'm here to bring you the mid-race update from Split 2. Um, I'm going to run through the top 10 running order. In uh, first and second place, running a uh, Altitude Brighton Volvo Team 1-2 right now, less than like three tenths of a second apart, is uh, Dale Niche and then Sanjin Dalalic. In third is Dave Oliver for Lazy Man Racing. Fourth, Jared Philsell running uh, the V8 Supercar Fan Group Falcon. In fifth is Timothy Hancock. In sixth is Kurt Stenberg for Power Bond Racing Team. In seventh is Richard Alwood for Overclockers Australia. In eighth position running for Demidov Motorsports is Nathan Britton. Ninth is Michael Manley. And then tenth is Reese Goldfinch, but he is being chased down a little bit by Dylan Carroll. That's the top ten running order for Split 2. And I've also just received a message that uh, Jay Kennedy, after pit stops in Split 3, is running third. Oh, nice effort there from Mr. Kennedy. He'd be fairly happy with that. Nice work. Indeed. Thanks, Reese. We'll catch up the uh, as the race goes on, mate. Just have a look at that margin between our top two. It's sort of fluctuating a little bit. Back out to 4.5 seconds. Uh, hammers the uh, time of 21.7 last time round. So um, it's probably a little bit uh, disheartening when you see that uh, car off into the distance. But uh, the only thing that sort of gets a bit of fire in the belly is when that car seems to get bigger and bigger. But I don't know if that's happening too much at the moment as these laps goes on. Hamilton's actually just had to, uh, to get through a bit of lap traffic. That's uh, Mate Lorinsky who made the, uh, the good sporting move and pulled the side on the back straight. So Hamilton wouldn't have lost too much time from that. Always good to see, uh, see drivers carrying on with good sportsmanship that does make a difference here. Let's have a look at this um, battle between Emerson and Kelly. I think uh, Emerson has seen that um, Kelly was on the charge here a little bit. And Emerson's pulled his finger out last time round. 21.922 to Kelly's uh, 22.1. So it looks like Emerson's fairly comfortable there with that uh, final step on the podium. And um, it's going to be a fair bit of work for Kelly to pull that margin in. But uh, tell you what, if he's not careful, he's going to have Mitch McLeod uh, all over him too because Mitch is really hanging in there. He is. But uh, Gordon Kelly did have the pace a bit earlier. Of course, maybe that benefit of the tyres has burned off a little bit. But uh, if Mitch can just hang on and, and be distant as he needs to be, about 12 laps left in the motor race, and Ellis, oh, sorry, Kelly hasn't skipped away like I thought he would have, perhaps. Looking at how quickly he was able to clear Val Ritchie's, who uh, is actually going to have Lee Ellis for company very soon, it seems. Continuing to chip away at the lap times is Ellis. Looks like uh, Vale's still flicking away a little bit. Um, yeah, but that, that margin between uh, Richards and Ellis is only about a second. So, um, yeah, if Ellis, Ellis can keep his composure, we know he's got a little bit fresher tyres, but um, as this race goes on, that um, that goodness will start to be going away from them. But um, Vale's still looking fairly comfortable there at this stage. So it's like 34 or 45 these guys are contending with and um, tell you what, it's been a good battle up front. It, uh, it only changed when it came around to pit stops. They were pretty much nose to tail for the opening 20 odd laps, but um, a little bit of a miscue there cost Richard Hampstead a couple of seconds and that's where we're at at the moment. Josh Mumbleton holding a 4.6 second margin over Richard Hampstead. And of course Hampstead uh, has got a few seconds still back up his sleeve there for John Emerson in the third. Sean Kelly back there in fourth who uh, Needs to be careful because uh, Mitch McLeod's uh, still back there snapping at his heels. So that's your top five there. 
Val Richie's has uh, got his hands full here. Val Richie's and Lee Ellis uh, battling it out for sixth and seventh. It's only about a second or not even that between these two now. A little bit further back there, Michael Fabian in uh, eighth. Adrian Stratford, ninth. And Wayne Burke still right there behind uh, Adrian Rennie at your top ten. So getting down into the final stages of this race, we're going to be coming to 10 laps to go this time around. And uh, of course, can't help but wonder how these guys are going with their off tracks. 17 <laughs> of them you've got in the race, and 35 laps in. So uh, hopefully the boys have been careful because we wouldn't want to be, you wouldn't want to be the first driver to get disqualified in a iRacing online race, but Val Ritchie's has ran wide in the first corner and that's managed to let Lee Ellis through. Val did just push a little bit too hard it seemed on the exit of the first turn. Caught a bit of grass and just had to back off to, to keep his composure. And that allowed Ellis to slide through into position number six. Bring this up on the, uh, the race recall replay. Might have just been due to a bit of pressure from behind because uh, the Val Ritchie's was receiving, but uh, did just slide a little bit wide and uh, dropped the left side off onto the grass and that was it. Though so Ellis threw into position six, he'll get the head down and try and press on, build a bit of a gap. But, uh, up in the top five, which seems like it's gonna be a bit of a difficult thing for, for Ellis to, to bridge the gap to. Kelly has managed to, to build more of a gap to Mitch McLeod. So that's opened up uh, about a second and a half there, it seems. Josh Muggleton punching out some very quick lap times, though. He's two tenths quicker than Hampson that time around. But big, big fight down the back of the field. That's Cubis and, uh, and Wayne Burke. That's for position 10. Burke currently has it there on side by side through the final corner. Burke just gets shuffled a little bit wide. And that first cube is through into P10. Really want to see that again because uh, I think Cubis might have made a bit of a mistake at the chicane, and that's just mixed things up big time for them. He uh, had a big, big go at Wayne Burke and just overshot, which then made it all a bit of an exciting moment down into the final turn. And that's managed to bring Marlon McMullen up into play. It doesn't take much here. You just got to get side by side for a little bit. You lose so much time and that just brings the next driver up into it. And Burke's close enough that he's going to have a good draft down into the final chicane. And we've got nine laps to go. Just want to follow this one for a little bit and see how that develops. Oh, Cubis, big, big slide. He's locked the rears a little bit going into the chicane. Gets big time sideways, cooked the rear tyres up a little bit. And Burke's going to put big pressure on him. You can't make, really make a move down into the final corner, or at least you don't want to, but once again, that's going to bring Marlon McMullen even closer to this little battle. Cubis sideways again. Those tyres are... Uh, Definitely feeling it. Locking the rears up not going to help any time. And Marlon McMullen now all over the back of Wayne Burke now too. So this is very quickly become a three-car battle. We'll give uh, both Cubis a little bit of breathing room, but it's not what uh, Wayne Burke wants to see. He wants to make it past that altitude right Falcon and quickly skip away as best he can. If you guys can see it, but uh, Wayne Burke's car, it's a little bit of a connection issue, it seems. It should just be bouncing back and forth a little bit, which is going to be very uncomfortable for the other drivers, but hopefully that won't cause a drama for them. So heading down this long back straight, Burke tucked into the draft, but not close enough to make a move. Gibbous looks like he's taking a very straight line through those corners. Maybe not as confident on the curves with the condition of his tires. And a 
right on board with Mullen and Mullen. Gee, this is a fantastic shot here. He's having a look on Wayne Burke into turn one. Not really a traditional passing zone, just due to how fast the exit of this corner is. So Burke's having trouble with uh, Cubis, which uh, Marlon with on in the Powerbond car is just going to be loving. Just touching on some developments up at the front. Don Emerson in third place is down. Sean Kelly getting a little bit closer. The gap's now closed to within four seconds, just on 3.7. So Kelly's been making ground. He's about three tenths quicker the last time by actually making him the fastest driver on the track. He's the only driver in the 21s that time around, the 21.9. And uh, still back for the lead. Muggleton is running quicker than Hampstead is at this point in time. Though so he's doing everything right, is Josh Muggleton. I don't think you can really ask for a better start to a season thus far. Still seven laps to go on the race though, but it's all looking very good for the Tatstock Non Falcon. Sorry to leave you in the lurch there, Leo. Had a bit of a power blackout here, and uh, but all pitches up and going now. But um, like I said, great little battle there, and, and Muggleton just uh, just needs hold hold his nerves, and uh, he'll be doing good. Well, good to have you back at the, at the right time. Have you been looking at this battle with Cubis, McMullen and Burke? That was an awesome pass that uh, Marlon just made, getting past the, uh, the altitude right Volvo Falcon. And uh, I don't think it's over just yet. Cubis going to be pushing very hard to try and make the ground back up. And uh, Marlon going to want to try and get past that Osram Ford. They've been going at it for a good number of laps. Like we said all race long, if he can just, oh, just looks like he just made a little bit wide, didn't quite get the power down. He's lost that margin to uh, Wayne Burke, but uh, if Marlon had been able to get that draft, he could have uh, benefited from it. But um, looks like now he'll be in the firing line as they come into the braking zone. Yeah, Cubis has definitely got speed here. Marlon going to go defensive. We're going to have a fantastic little braking fuel here. We have seen drivers hang on around the outside, but it's not easy to do. Marlon gets. Ooh. Very oh, sideways under brakes step. Back of these cars moving around all over the place. Marlon runs defensive once more, and this is going to give Cubis a fantastic run onto the straight. You don't want to go side by side into turn one. Marlon just backs oh. out of it. Has he got the job done? No, Marlon's still there. No. Look at that. No, a little bit of contact. contact there. That'll push him wide. Cubis, they're still going to be side by side as they come into the S's. No one wants to give an inch. Up on the curves, but Jesus, can you run any closer than this? Cubis ducks back in behind the Powerbond Ford. Has oh. another look up the hill. Oh, nose to tail contact. Just gave a little nudge there to Marlon McMullen, but that's going to work in the favour of Bocatel. He made stuff for both of them going around the outside. Brave move by Cattell. He's going to try and shut the door, but can't quite complete it yet. He's going to try and go for two in the one stretch of road. Oh, he's he still can get holding a good strong. Run. Can't quite get the power down. He's going to lose that spot to Bo Cubis. But wow, great racing between these guys battling it out for 11th, 12th, and 13th. Still far from over. You see McMullen running defensive once more. Oh, the run Cubis has got. He's got great pace down that back straight. He's going to look around to the outside. Marlon's going to hold his line. McMullen very deep under brakes. Oh, look at that mid-corner pace that Cubis has got. Great stuff right to the back here of Marlon McMullen. I love the way they light the rears over that uh, that crest. Just lightens the back of the car a little bit, just to make it a little bit exciting, of course. And uh, currently sitting with five laps to go. So these guys know that it's the business end, it's uh, party time, and geez, they're really putting on a show for us here. Well, Marlon really sideways there. It's worked out nicely for Burke because, of course, when these guys start battling it out, Wayne Burke's been able to hit his marks and pull just a little bit of a margin. Nice little bit of breathing space from back from Marlon to Marlon. Marlon using uh, a lot of curve there. Bo Cubis using even more curve, so getting right up on the wheel and using all of the road and then some just to try and make up any little bit of time that they can. 
was the last couple of laps. Marlon McMullen's been a bit of a sitting duck down this long straightaway, so we'll see how it all unfolds now. Not the greatest of exits there for both Cubas, but um, him and Cattell are really going to be working that draft now. You can see the margin. Look at the Cubas really trying to get in there. Marlon moving around, trying to break that draft. Coming into the braking zone, he thinks about looking around the outside. He know that hasn't worked the last couple of times. These guys really moving around on old tyres now. A little bit of contact there, nose to tail between Marlon Mullen and Bo Cubis. Cubis thinks about it, looks to the inside, thinks better of it though. Needs to get a nice run out of this turn. Can't quite get the power down. A little bit sideways as they come onto the front straight. But a great little battle between him and Marlon McMullen. Well, we're seeing lots of wiggles from all of these guys. Cubis got sideways under brakes, can tell behind almost mimic the exact same move. They're all sperming around on old tyres. The rear of these cars, not what you'd call planted at all. You see lighting the rears on the exit, getting right on the limit of the adhesion of grip in the braking zones. Well, so one unknown that we've got is how many off tracks or how many incidents that these guys had over the duration of this race. 42 laps of a 45 lap race so far. So. They've got to be careful that they don't use too many of those off tracks. They're getting real curb hungry because they're really fast and they really want to get this job done between these drivers. Then, man, exactly as you were saying that, you're not going to be, want to be crossing a number. Will you believe this Mitch McLeod disqualified? Oh, no! Mitch That's... McLeod was sitting in P5. Looks like he's disqualified from the event. Absolute heartbreak there for McLeod. Oh, Cattell, Cattell's going to get the job done on Cubis. Dives a move on the inside, he gets the job done. Can he hold the position? Cubis looks to run on the inside. They're going to go side by side under the bridge now. Oh, awesome run back from Cubis. Fantastic bit of driving. Takes the position back from Cattell. Beautiful bit of racecraft. He's going to hold the position. Three laps to go. Well, this is all happening, and the, there's not much happening up front, but that gap is slowly pulling in a little bit. 3.2 seconds between Josh Muggleton and Richard Hampstead. Lick Muggo's just uh, hitting his marks. He knows he's only got a couple of laps to go. He can probably let a second or so slide, but uh, 3.2 seconds is still quite comfortable. Also checking out the battle between John Emerson and Sean Kelly. That's got about three seconds between these guys, but they they are on lap 44 or 45, so two laps to go in this race. This battle between Lee Ellis and Bar Richie's for fifth and sixth place. Coming on the start finish line. Under the bridge, fairly tiny for these guys. They haven't got the rear hanging out. They're really having both a red hot go. I think Lee's really benefiting, benefiting from that uh, that late pit stop. He had the fresher tyres of the two. He's managed to get the job done, and uh, if he can just hold on to it for the next uh, lap and a half, I think he'll be pretty sweet. But um, Vale's still not in position to let him go, though. Doesn't want to make him uh, let him have it too easy, but um, I think he may just be a bit of a sitting duck on old tyres, though. Yeah, he's done well up to this point as well, Richie's. Moved up a couple of spots from the ninth position that he began the race in. I think he just found a, a nice quiet rhythm and has been keeping his nose clean. But uh, two guys have been quick towards the end of this race have been Kelly and Ellis. And uh, towards the back end here, Kelly has managed to close the gap towards uh, John Emerson. That's now only 3.2 seconds separating them. But don't really think it's going to be enough. Because we're now on the last lap. Josh Muggleton begins his final circuit of this Road Atlanta racetrack. Richard Hampstead in hot pursuit, but three seconds back. I'll tell you what, it was just that pit stop, wasn't it? Yeah, that's exactly right, mate. This uh, this race was no no tail for the opening 20 odd laps before they made their pit stop. Uh, Hampstead just made one little mistake. He just slid through his box, had to reverse up, and that's the margin that uh, Muggleton had. It was out to about five seconds, so he's managed to pull in a couple of seconds here or there, but. Um, that's pretty much it. That's all that um, that's happened. It's between these two, they've been nose to tail, and um, I know Hampstead will be kicking himself, but it's just been a great drive from Josh Muggleton.
Muggleton's only got a couple of turns to go. He's had a brilliant start to this season, of course. Last season, he topped it off with a championship win. We head to round one. He gets uh, the win at Okiyama with, uh, you know, obviously interesting circumstances. We head to Oran Park for round two. He wins that. And now we hit for round three at, Oran, at Road Atlanta. And he comes off the final turn. He makes it three from three. A great start for season four for Josh Muggleton. Oh, big moment there for Richard Amstead as he comes to the line there. A nice little wiggle there coming onto the straight. Yeah, getting a bit excited was Richard Hampstead. Still got to be happy with the second place, but no doubt we'll be ruining what could have been. But fight's not over yet for uh, position five. The Ellis has it. Val Ritchie's putting big, big pressure on, but uh, Ellis going to hold on across the line of position five. Great job between them. Of course, Michael Fabian will come across. Oh, looks like we've had a bit of a moment back there under the bridge. Who was that? Uh, Mate Lorinsky. Mate oh. Lorinsky, uh, he was just running his own race, but uh, unfortunate end there for him. Stratford rounds out uh, running in position. Eight there. Whoa, what happened there? Dwayne Burke ran out of fuel before the line. Oh, now we're going to uh, check to see if he actually lost that spot to... No, he was able McMullen, to hold on mate. for, uh, Looks like he for held position on. nine, and Marlon McMullen rounded out the top oh, ten. Oh, 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 oh. Heart and mouth stuff there for Wayne Burke. So we'll quickly run through the order. What a great race here at Road Atlanta. Uh, Josh Muggleton taking the win over Richard Hampstead. John Emerson in third. Sean Kelly in fourth. In fifth, it was Lee Ellis. Great run from him towards the end there on fresh tyres. Sixth place, Mar Richie's in seventh. Michael Fabian. Adrian Stratford in eighth. Ninth, Wayne Burke. <laughs> Heart and mouth moment there. Coming to the line, running out of fuel. And Marlon McMullen grabbing tenth. In eleventh, it's Bo Cubis. Bo Cattell in twelfth. Great little battle there in the dying stages between those three. Uh, Tobias Zerny in thirteenth. Ian Ford in fourteenth. Michael Schreier in fifteenth. Tony Ortridge in 16th, uh, Mate Lorinsky in 17th, uh, Mitch McLeod, heartbreak for him, running in the top five and gets that uh, disqualification penalty. Finishes in 18th place, Scott Uren in 19th and Dean O'Brien in 20th. In 21st, it's uh, Dylan Goulson in 22nd, Matty Hill in 23rd, James McKnight, Renz Brookman in 24th and ready at your 25th position is Matthew Barron. So... Oh, didn't that have everything, mate? Uh, we had uh, all sorts of dramas. Before we cover all the rest of that, we'll head to Reese Gardner, thanks to Astro Gaming Headsets. Uh, yeah, guys, I bring you the finishing order and the top ten for Split 2. Um, first and second, uh, Altitude, Brighton, Volvo, 1-2. They did a synchronised drift across the finishing line. Dale Nish won Split 2. Sanjin Delalic in third. Uh, second place, Dave Oliver finished third, Jared Filsall finished fourth, fifth position in the 20 car was Timothy Hancock, number sixth, Kurt Stenberg, number seventh, Richard Alwood, number eight, Dylan Carroll, um, who made up a few positions from chasing down Reese Goldfinch for tenth earlier on in the race, ninth for Demidov Motorsports, Nathan Britton, and rounding out your ten, Michael Manley. And I've also just gotten word that down in split three, Mr V8's online, Jay Kennedy, finished on the podium he finished in third place would be happy you chappy about that yeah bet bet <laughs> yeah definitely he's on the same <laughs> team as me so i have a vested interest in how well he does but anyway <laughs> nice work race appreciate your work yeah your, your work cut out for you plenty happening tonight yeah, it was a pretty action-packed race, but, you know, um, I love these races the most because uh, I love having something to do. We appreciate your work, mate, and uh, no doubt we look forward to having a chat to you uh, next round. We've got, uh, we head to Phillip Island. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's going to be an interesting one. All right, well, great race. Uh, i tell you what, Josh Muggleton and, and Richard Hampstead, like we touched on, uh, it was nose to tail for the entire race, and the only thing that changed it was pit stops, and that's why we love pit stops so much, because you just never know what's going to happen, and uh, no doubt uh, Hammer would be kicking himself, but uh, it doesn't take much. You just miss your mark a little bit. He has to uh, put it in reverse, and um, you know that time loss is exactly what the margin was uh, come the end of the race. That's right. The, uh, the gap from Muggleton to Hampstead at the end was 3.3 seconds, and uh, Hammer lost more time than that in the pits. So that's the game, though. That's how it goes. But didn't this race deliver? Always like coming to Road Atlanta, and uh, it never fails to disappoint.
Just waiting for a few drivers to pop into the uh, commentary box. And we'll start off with our race winner. Mate, you're making a bit of a habit of this. Uh, three starts, three wins. Uh, Josh Muggleton, tats.com Falcon. Well done, mate. Yeah, cheers, mate. Um, yeah, we're on a roll at the moment. It's, uh, it's going well. Mate, sensational battle between you and Hampstead. Uh, it was nose to tail from the drop of the green flag up until uh, pit stops, and that obviously worked in your favour. Yeah, that um, that first stint was awesome. I, um, I, I felt I had the quicker car because... I could sort of gap him all the way to the back straight and then that draft it would bring him back up close again and um, and right back on my hammer. So, yeah, if, if I could break the draft, I think I would have had enough to um, to pull away. But, um, yeah, got into the pits and I'm not sure what happened with Richard if he overshot his pit box or something, but um, got out, um, built a good gap and then sort of just managed the fuel to um, to make it home safe. How was it coming into tonight, mate? Uh, 45 laps around here, and, of course, the new rule that we all have to think about is um, the 17 incidents, uh, which can uh, end your race, as, as a couple of the drivers found out tonight. Um, was that playing on your mind a little bit? <laughs> it was a bit. I, um, I got up to 13 in the end. It was slowly creeping there. So, um, luckily, I was I was having to save a bit of fuel just to be safe at the end, so um, I could manage the one X's a bit. But, um, yeah, bloody long race. It's... Um, it's a tough track, and um, yeah, 45 laps. I think it was 180 k's or something. is um, is a long way. So um, yeah, happy to bring the Tats.com Falcon home in first. Last one before we wrap up, mate. Um, without stating the bleeding obvious, uh, sensational start to your title defence. Can go much better, really. <laughs> um, and and big points for all three races too. So um, that's going to help. Going to help. Sorry. Um, through this through this season with me missing a few weeks um getting married and christmas and honeymoon and all that so um yeah i sort of needed to do that do that for the first three or, or four um so yeah i'm pretty happy well done mate we'll now talk to the man who gave you a bit of curry for the most of the night uh, richard hampstead uh how many it was all going uh, great. It was great to see you guys nose to tail, but just unfortunately it was the pit stops that um, came it all undone for you. Yeah, um, well done to Muggo. He did the better job tonight. But, yeah, I had a pretty quick car, um, you know, all over Muggo at the start, but just, yeah, not really driving well enough, I don't think, to find a way through. And then I, I stuffed up at the, the pit stop and I completely missed my, uh, missed my box. So that cost me a couple of seconds, and yeah, then I tried to chase him down, but yeah, it was really just too quick. How'd you find tonight, mate? Uh, you know, I said to Muggleton about the uh, the off tracks and you, how you got to be be mindful of them as you as you go along. And forty five laps around here is is a, a decent spell. So uh, how did that play into your mind? Yeah, well, yeah, like I got thirteen incidents too, so I was a bit worried at the end there. But yeah, I saw a couple of guys got disqualified. Um, yeah, it's very easy to do. There's a couple of turns here where if you're just slightly bit off your normal line, you get a one time. So, yeah. It was a great battle to watch, mate. I know it didn't sort of all uh, unfold the way you would have liked it, but uh, it was great viewing and uh, mate, no doubt we'll see you next week, Philip Island. Yep, definitely. Hopefully make amends. And the final step on the podium uh, in the good game, Falcon, uh, John Emerson, uh, mate, uh, Tell us a bit about your race. Yeah, uh, I was pretty happy to get a podium, to be honest. I'm pretty glad Renz didn't put it in gear or whatever it was that he had. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I was very lucky with that. Um, yeah, I was saving fuel from, from the first lap. I've, in testing during the week, I realized I was actually faster over a stint saving fuel than going all out. Just obviously my driving style all out is pretty rubbish. So... Uh, saving fuel from the get-go, I was kind of hoping that Muggo and Hammer would battle a bit harder and I'd be able to keep in touch, but they'd just got a little bit too far away and I was a bit worried about Mitch behind me and, yeah, and almost almost jumped Hammer, but, yeah, not to be. But, yeah, pretty happy with third. We touched a little bit on, on Muggo's start of the season, mate. Yours isn't too bad either. Um, coming into tonight's round, you were um, P3 in the championship, so a good start to, to a, a long championship. Yeah, it's, I think it's my best start ever, actually. Um, very excited. I'm, I'm a bit like Muggo, though. I'm going to be a, miss a few rounds due to a wedding and honeymoon. So, um, yeah, it's hopefully I can keep it going for the first eight weeks or first seven weeks or whatever it is and then and just see what happens, I guess. 
Yeah, good couple of strong weeks, mate. A couple of mulligans up your sleeve, and you never know how this will all pan out uh, come uh, week 12. But um, it's been great. Um, you know, you obviously had you. <laughs> We've already spoken about the, the bad luck you had in the opening round, but uh, nevertheless, you've uh, you've punched away and it's been good results, mate. And uh, no doubt, you're looking forward to Phillip Island. Yeah, it should be pretty good. Um, now that we've got John Latham on our team, we've uh, found so many different things in the setup that we've never even thought of before. So it's been great having him come to the team. It's been fantastic. Hopefully, we can get him uh, up to speed with some some of the TTL shenanigans that we get up to. But, uh, uh, yeah, it should be pretty good at Phillip Island. Looking really forward to it. Really forward to it. For looking... <laughs> yeah, well, geez, you know what I mean. It'll be good. Really looking forward to it. That's the word. <laughs> it's been a long race, mate. 45 laps. Uh, I think you just need a, need a bit of a drink and a lie down, mate. You'll be right. Yeah, that's right. All the best, mate. Uh, next man on the cards, Sean Kelly. Great charge from you, mate. Started back in seventh, put it home in fourth. Um, just a little bit too much of a margin there to close on on Emerson in the dying laps. Yeah, hey, guys. Uh, yeah, it's a good race. Pretty happy with that. Um, yeah, a few mistakes and took too much fuel and didn't really save any at all. So, yeah, couldn't quite close the gap to Emerson as I hoped. But, um, yeah, all in all, it's a good race. Pretty happy. It was good to see you charge at the start, mate. You looked uh, fairly aggressive. The pace on board at the start was good and you peeled off a couple of spots there and um, that pace pretty much stayed uh, all race long. Yeah, they sort of didn't really fight me hard because I had pretty good pace at the start. I was setting my marks pretty well. I got a few good runs on the back straight. So, yeah, it certainly makes the job easier when you get those early positions. Next time, just have to qualify a bit, I guess. And how you think about next week, mate? We head to Phillip Island. Uh, it's one of those places you either love it or hate it, and a lot of people love it just because it's one of our home tracks here in Australia. But uh, your thoughts heading to Phillip Island? Yeah, I love Phillip Island. Uh, always seemed to go all right there. And um, last time round, I decided to start coming out of one of the corners in first gear, which is silly, and I'll try not to make that mistake again and try and be consistent and try and get another top five. All the best, mate. Appreciate you stopping by. And, uh, yeah, we look forward to see how you go at Phillip Island. Cheers. Next man sliding into the commentary box. Uh, had a decent old uh, battle there towards the end there. That was brilliant race. And between uh, Bert, Cubis and Cattell was Marlon McMullen. Marlon, uh, mate, that was that was, uh, was good race. And it was almost braille there between you guys there. Nose to tail action. Yeah, it was, a, it was an awesome battle. Um... I couldn't believe um, the amount of positions I made up thanks to a few guys getting the DNFs and other things. But, you know, at the end of the day, we slowly puddled along, got, got our way up there. And, you know, at the end, I didn't think a top 10 was possible and slowly powered down that gap with uh, Bowen, I think it was Wayne, and ended up getting onto the tail of them. And, oh, it was on from there, wasn't it? It was all hell at Mary's, so it was awesome. <laughs> I was going to touch on that. You beat me to it, mate. Started back in 20th, uh, bringing over for a top 10. Uh, I think someone had to tap you on the shoulder at the start of the night and said, would you take that? You'd take it straight away. Uh, well, after the first corner, I'm not sure if you guys saw what happened in the first lap, but that was it was a bit interesting back there. I went off in the grass. It was like Virginia all over again a couple of seasons ago. Got back <laughs> onto the track and uh, was all over the shop. Sorry to Wayne. I tried to get it back onto the power and I hit the curb and went sideways massively. But um, after that first lap, I had five incidents, so... We just had to really go out there and just you know, keep on a good behaviour. And next week, Phillip Island, mate. Yeah, yeah. After last season, we'll see how we go. I mean, last season wasn't fantastic. I think I got up to 10th and then all of a sudden plummeted back to 20th by the end of the race. So yeah, it's a track I like. It's just the uh, results don't really show there for me, unfortunately. All the best, mate. We look forward to having a chat to you then. And, of course, the man who was battling out with you is uh, one of the drivers. It was great great to watch. Uh, Bo Cattell, mate. Um, I don't know, you need uh, new new front splitters and bumpers on your car, but it was great racing. Yeah, it was uh, pretty pretty hectic after the first corner. I don't even know what happened. There's just cars everywhere, and luckily the car felt pretty good and just got in a rhythm and tried to keep the incidents down and ended up fighting um, Marlon and, and Bo in a great battle at the end. We were, all seemed to race really clean, probably because of the amount of incidents we all had, but <laughs> great racing. It was awesome. Certainly a new aspect with, uh, with iRacing now, just to be mindful of those incidents. You can't be too curb hungry and all the rest of it, but um, it really does play on your mind a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, I, th I think it's a good thing. It's a bit tricky, you know, maybe not the number of them, but um, just this track particular, in particular, there's just like, um, I think it was Richard was saying, there's just a few spots where you're, um, 
yeah, you can get caught out really easily. And what about Phillip Island for you, mate? Looking forward to that one? I am. I just haven't had a lot of practice on it. I've Since I've sort of been doing the V8s, I don't think there's been a round there. So I yeah, really have to get my act together and do a few laps. All the best, mate. We look forward to catching up with you the next week. So uh, plenty of testing, mate, and uh, no doubt you'll sort the car out. And good luck, mate. Thanks, mate. And, of course, another one who slipped in the commentary box. Good little charge uh, from Lee Ellis. Uh, started back in eighth, brought it home in fifth, mate. A uh, little bit of a different strategy there to stay out a little bit longer for the fresher tyres towards the end, eh? <laughs> it's good you guys uh, think like that. But, no, I just, <laughs> um, yeah, just kept on going. I probably should have pitted a lap earlier, but I didn't. took a little bit too much fuel and... Yeah, I think I was just lucky enough to get home in time for the race. I think I got home at like 9.16 or something. Well, it does always help to have those fresher tyres towards the end, especially when you've got a couple of battles on your hand. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, I'm pulling up to um, bail quite quite a bit, three, about three or four tenths a lap. And, yeah, it, just, it was a good race between me and Bell. I had heaps of fun. So bring on Road Atlanta every week. Screw the other tracks, just Road Atlanta. <laughs> We're at Phillip Island, mate. Come on. We love Phillip Island. Yeah, no. Nah. I'm not yeah, a no? fan of it. I'm just not a fan. It's, I don't know what it, what, what it is about it. Maybe the whole flowiness to it, but just not a fan of it. But uh, I'll race it anyway just because I've raced every other week. So, oh, Plenty of testing, mate. You'll sort it out. <laughs> it's one thing I'm lacking on testing. Thanks, <laughs> All the best, mate. Uh, let's see who has a commentary box. Tobias is Ernie. Tobias, mate, uh, started back in 18th place. Still got a nice little charge there, back up to 13th. Tell us about it. Yeah, interesting charge, um, especially uh, after lap one where I fell back to P20. Uh, my start was quite okay, but um, due to the fact that Renz was parking there, uh, got a little bit messy into turn one. I was on the very, very outside, touched the grass, made a fantastic drift, um, catched it. But then um, someone in front as well... Uh, I have to look at things. Scotty Wren got turned and uh, I had nowhere to go, made the contact. And then the way in second sector uh, through the S's, uh, I was trying to collect myself again to get into my rhythm somehow. And cars were passing me like I was parking. I got contact here, contact there. And yeah, at the end of the lap, I was P20. <laughs> and a little bit so you, managed uh, to miss, yeah. you managed to miss most of the dramas at the first turn? Yeah, I was part of the dramas of the last, uh, yeah. But in the end, car felt uh, weird uh, in the first few laps then. But I managed uh, to get a few low 22s with a bended car uh, and managed to get to the pits in lap 25. It showed me one minute of optional repairs. I uh, didn't do it. And yeah, I had a great charge in the end. And maybe a few laps more, and I could have closed up the to the guys in front. Well, all things considered, mate, uh, you had a good charge, mate, in considering all the dramas you had, but uh, nice little charge, and to bring it home 13th, mate, from as far back as you were, and all the dramas you had, I think um, I think you did a great job, mate, so well done. Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, what else we got here? Oh, Mitch McLeod. Uh, Mitch McLeod was having a great old run up in the top five there till uh, you had uh, a bit of a drama, mate. Just a little bit of a drama. I'm not <laughs> quite sure what happened there. I just disappeared. I don't, don't know what happened. Oh, victim of the uh, the old uh, number 17? Yeah, I've already been thinking about that, and I reckon there'll be a new livery for my car next week. <laughs> it's something we didn't really really touch on yet, a, a bit of a change of paint scheme. But anyway, we'll leave that to anyone else who wants to uh, go back and watch the broadcast. But, um, mate, it was a good run, top five, and it was just unfortunate circumstances that uh, you got caught out with that uh, the new rule. Yeah, well, serious face on now. I actually really enjoyed this week. I um, did my qualifying time at my dad's house in the simulator where I'm usually a few tenths off, my personal times. And... Um, thought, oh yeah, I'll come on, go faster, and it didn't happen. And um, I thought, oh yeah, just go in the race, and it'll be all good, and yeah, put a few too many wheels off. At the end of the day, like I said, uh, you had great pace, and uh, to find that sort of form is is pretty good, mate. And to run as strong as you were, it was just uh, a bit of bad luck there, mate. But uh, bring on Phillip Island, how do you think you'll go there? I'll probably blow my engine like I have every other time, but um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm... Just trying to enjoy the racing, and um, you know the competitions are tough at the moment. I'm really enjoying it, so 
they'd rather enjoy the racing than you know come last by a mile or first by a mile. So it's really really good at the moment. All the best, mate. We look forward to catching up to you next week, and uh, of course we'll, we'll all be uh, having a little bit of a look at this uh, this new paint scheme you you may have on offer for us. I'll try and make it good as possible. <laughs> all the best, mate. Let's see who else has joined us. Uh, Ian Ford has slid into the commentary box, mate. Started back in nineteenth, finished in fourteenth, but you had yourself uh, you had your hands full there throughout most of the race too. Some great battles. Oh, that's it, buddy. Had a had a difficult first corner, dodging cars everywhere. And then basically just settled into a pack and tried to make work my way through. And teammates were a bit more lucky working their way through, and I didn't get there. How are your thoughts coming into this place? It's one of those places you either love or hate it. It's um, it's definitely got a different number of uh, of turns as far as undulations and bumps and uh, blind apexes and everything. How did you how did you feel coming into the to the round? Uh, I, I I'm pretty positive around this track. It's nice and fun. I just reckon the FIA need to step in and flatten that last corner because I hate it. <laughs> it doesn't help when you're trying to save on your 17s. <laughs> Not really. Ended up with 15 at about lap 15, so 30 <laughs> laps of conserving. <laughs> well, you did a good job, mate. Uh, better than some of the others. Oh, uh, that's it. Tobias came up behind me at one point and I just waved him through. And I tried chasing him down and stuff and made a big mistake. So I'm just like, okay, I'll just cruise now. So now we look forward to the island, mate. Does testing start tonight or you give yourself a couple of days off? Uh, we've already had a bit of a debrief because our team just doesn't have the qualifying pace at the moment. So hopefully we'll try and make a decent improvement there and we have heaps of pace for the island. All the best, mate. and appreciate you stopping by and having a bit of a chat with us, mate. And uh, good luck for next week. Thank you. See ya. Uh, last but not least, uh, Matty Barron, mate, uh, 25th, uh, not the result you'd be looking for tonight? No, well, I had a pretty good run in the early race and then the main race there, got a pretty decent start, had nowhere to go, got boxed in, nearly fenced it back on the start line, so I was lucky to make it as far as I did down there into turn one before I turned the corner and the cars just parted ways and he has got your end back and across the track, so I had nowhere to go, so... Unfortunate, mate, uh, yeah, especially when such a long race to go out. You never want to go out on lap one, but uh, nevertheless, uh, how about next week, mate? Phillip Island, how does that fit in your favourite book? Uh, Phillip Phillip Island's down towards the bottom, but I'll be there, hopefully. So, with the Jay Kennedy Movember skin on, repping it for him, so. Very good, mate. Well, all the best, and uh, appreciate you stopping by, mate, for a bit of a chat, and, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how you go next week, mate, but uh, all the best. Thank you. All right, well, I think that uh, almost wraps it up. Uh, Leo, we saw uh, plenty of action throughout this race. Uh, we saw drama, carnage, uh, blown engines and uh, disqualifications. But in the end, um, well, it was a great race uh, overall. Yeah, Road Atlanta always puts on a show. And, uh, yeah, we've seen a fantastic start to the season, haven't we? A lot of variety, a lot of drama. And I can't wait to see what Phillip Island brings. Yeah, of course, next week, uh, like I said, uh, we head to Phillip Island. It's going to be a great race. 23 laps for next Monday night from 8.30 here at V8s Online. And, of course, uh, coming up uh, for our next broadcast on Wednesday night, we've got the Sim Instruments Truck Series Round 4 from Bristol Motor Speedway. The guys have got 55 laps to contend with, so that should be a lot of fun. And of course, don't forget, Sunday night from 8pm, we've got the Proto GT Challenge. The HDPs, the Chevy Corvettes and the Ford GTs will tackle Silverstone for Round 4, and that's a 45-minute race, so that should be lots of fun. Well, I'm going to wrap things up. Um, you've been watching V8 Online's live and exclusive coverage of the iRacing.com V8's official online series, brought to you by our good friends at V8 Supercar Fan Group, Direct Clutch Services, and a very own V8's online superstore. Your winner for round three from Road Atlanta, Josh Muggleton. <laughs>